this has now happened to a <laughs> connector. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, yeah. That's you. You're one of the participants. Yeah, I'm going to leave. Okay. This is the reInvent uh, office with AWS and Microsoft and Docker. Who else on the call? What's the URL? Which URL? Oh. Zoom US slash, slash my slash CNCF notary project. CNCF notary. Slash or CNCF no. all one? My slash CNCF notary project all one. Okay. What? Can you display here? No. Uh, can I display? Good question. Yeah, I can. I'm here. I can. Yeah, we're using the HackMD for notes. I was just trying to okay. make sure we have that up in the regular here. Oh, I'll share. Um, share. HackMD. Got it. Okay. Looks like we have four participants. Two of them are in the room. Or three of them. No, three of them. All right, so everybody's in the room. Okay, well, we didn't, I set expectations for 2 o'clock. I gave yes. the extra half an hour just to kind of get things organized here. Sweet. Yep. All right. Before we get the larger group on the call, um, you know, this is always the balance. I, I pinged you and I just assumed you were busy. And um, it's always a balance of a few people that can get run really fast and then the larger group that is annoyed that you ran really fast. And then you have the larger group that you run a little slower, but all this good information comes up that you didn't think about. So um, that's the struggle I, I know that I've been kind of having with. It. Well, we did, yeah, we did discuss earlier about breaking into smaller groups more. It's something that we should. We had when we did that kickoff. We're like, look, let's have some breakout meetings yeah. so we can focus on key signing and we can focus on, you know, use cases and usability and APIs. And I don't know if we've got to the point where that's a thing, but. We are a month away from KubeCon, and there was, at least in my head, some sort of a line by which we should have made material enough progress that we can start sculpting how to build a puppy <coughs> second half of the year. And I'm not feeling we're there yet, so yeah, agree. we need to. Uh, I'm just finding put the heat. Just a tad. Ah, okay. Bye. So I think. So the thing that I came out of the last one is. Like there's this balance of jumping into some details and like getting into where are we storing the metadata and so forth in index or manifest and both and blah blah blah. But I feel like we still tripped up on this just this basic thing of what are we signing? Like are we signing uh, a manifest regardless of the name? Are we signing something that says it is my SQL, you know, colon v1? Um, is it just my SQL colon v1 or is there something related to the path? And if it includes the path then where's the line between the path the, and the <coughs> registry and how do I move things across repos for various workflows? And I feel like if we can close on that, 
then that at least opens up the next round of conversations because depending on what we decide, there's claims information or something, and there's discovery. There's a bunch of conversations that fall out of that, but I feel like that was the, the core thing. That's what I left with last week. What about other folks? Yeah, and that's kind of why I read this doc on the way over, which oh. is this, which is in the channel which you, I just posted in. But that was kind of because the conversations we had around, I think that some people who were not so much in the um, in the container community didn't quite understand how we use repos, mm. and so I tried to write down what kind of issues there were. Um, and what kind of workflows exist, and why it's not um, necessarily quite the same problem as other people yeah. have in other areas, and therefore we've yeah. got these confusing things. I mean, I think at some point we're going to have to make some decisions about <clears throat> what kind of workflows we're going to actually support and what's going to be how which things are going to be easier and which things are going to be more complicated. Yep. Um, so there's the. Uh, so should we take some time and read Justin's stock? Yep. Okay. Okay. Take some time and read Justin's stock. Oh wait, where's your doc? I put it in the Slack. Oh, and I'll put that in the video. Sorry, can somebody? Uh, yes. Yeah. So he pops it in the HackMD, then I'm I'm doing it. I won't get lost in my own tabs. Yeah. <laughs> so does anybody have any other things? Like, if we can just maybe just get the agenda, that would help. Like. Uh, I'm about to read your doc. Is your doc about name or does your doc have like a bunch of agenda? It's about, it's about mirroring basically. Just uh, so, okay. And what what how the um how people actually use things. I think that um thank you. Steve, where are you sharing the information right now? Uh we're in the hack M D uh I'll I'll paste it for you. Are you do you have Slack open? Yeah. So he just um Wait, hold on. So, is that the right thing? Let me make sure it's the right one. Yeah, not right now. <coughs> um, here, let me just. Shh. Let's see. 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 So can you see what I'm actually sharing? Uh, right now, yes. It's a HackMD document. Is it the split screen, split brain one, or the fully rendered one? No, it's, it's a fully one. rendered one right now. OK, good. Uh, there was also an, an item that we wanted to discuss, which was some requirements for CNAP. Do I just add it to the agenda, or what's the procedure? Yeah, if you can do that, Radu, that'd be great. Okay. Well, um, I was actually just typing the agenda items in there anyway, so if you add it, that'll be the exact queue that we want to use. That CNAP doc was interesting. I started to read it, and it was nice. I'm interesting for your definition of interesting. <laughs> In a good way.
I know Vincent said he couldn't join. Are we expecting anybody else from Choir Red Hat? Or I, uh, I have to go back and look at who accepted or not. But did Vincent say he wasn't available today? Or was that yeah, Wednesday? yeah, oh, week. So it was the Wednesday. Oh, it's the whole week. He's on day one thing probably should bring up, uh, some people didn't get the cancellation note for this morning's meeting and people showed up in the Zoom room this morning and I told them, I, I actually received the cancellation and told everyone about this meeting, but just, just so you know, not everyone knew about it. No, apologies. I'm trying to get people to focus on the Slack channel and I did post, I think I posted there. It was yeah, you did. Okay. You did. So I, all right, I'm just going to, I'm going to read. Sorry, everybody, we're not ignoring you. Is that still reading? Yeah, I need more moment. Okay. What's your on my class? Package management system, so on my package management system. There should be some commas in. Oh, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah, it's all right. it's I got you. Right. I just say unlike package management systems.
that we're doing first? We could. Okay. So I'm trying to grok the total thing we you're getting at. Is it the the in the mirroring case? Is the assumption that just the the DNS name changes, or is it that the you want to make sure we support the, path changes too? The current use people currently. So I'm mean, going to say here people. Or do use path name changes because they kind of have to. Um, and so. But is that a mirroring or is that where they're just moving the content to their register? I thought you were trying well, to explicitly uh, call out the mirroring. I'm not. I'm not can't, I mean, in a sense, there's no distinction because other than other than the one mirror that Docker used to run for China, there aren't really any actual. And it's some, and pass, pull through caches. There aren't really any real meaningful mirroring situations that currently exist. There was one product, not Sonatype, what was it? There was a, a, vent, a customer that came to me with one of them recently that was kind of doing what JFrog does, where they do a bit of redirection for you, then they do a, a passive cache. So, and I'm I'm just trying to figure out, do we? Are you trying to make sure that we can support a real mirror where it's more of a passive? I'm querying, you know, hub DockerHub.io slash foo slash thing colon v1, and I can still get it, even though I'm going through another DNS name or a proxy. Or no, I really just want to move that image selectively, that one or two or five images to another. I, mean, I think Justin was well, trying to talk about what people are doing today. Yeah, this was, okay. the document was particularly for the people who. Are not, are not in the container resource yeah, ecosystem and gotcha. don't understand the weird shit that we do <laughs> and that, that we've ended up doing. I mean, I think that in terms of, I mean, I think that because we've ended up with a situation where we can't use we can't use the simple kind of mirroring strategies that you use for let's say Ubuntu simply because the infrastructure just doesn't exist and um, unless we want to actually start introducing wholesale mirroring and pull through caches as a feature of the ecosystem, um, then uh, those things are just not going to exist. We would have to build them. I, you were talking about... No, I was just going to... You were also... But you, were, you mentioned about multi-region. Yes. Earlier. I mean, so are you, are you planning to have a namespace, uh, registry namespace for all regions, then? So, Maybe. one of the great joys of working containers is most of your roadmap is actually public, so <laughs> you can happily talk about the stuff that's already on there, right? But one of the things we have to do is be able to put uh, images in different AWS regions, right? Um, and not rely on the fact that the underlying cloud storage that we built on is that, they actually move it around. A consequence of that is that if you actually put images in multiple regions, a customer may want to come in and say, give me that image, and it's up to the cloud provider to go, oh, I'm going to pick it from the right place, and if it's not there, I'll do some magic on the background mm -hmm. and get it from me, right? Those are two different problems. One is just putting images in different places, and the second one is easier global pull, single cross, multi -re global repo content. So both are going to happen, right? We, we have to do them. But in the context of mirroring, why were we even talking about mirroring and signing? Because I clearly missed last week, and I'm so sorry. So I I Justin's not trying to talk about mirroring in the sense of having full mirrors of registry content, but rather right. in the context of what are people doing today for how they're getting image content around in different locations. Okay. Right. But also, and also, moving yeah. more than but also how this is different from other solutions, such as package signing, where yeah. um, there's very the straightforward mirroring model means that there's already a model where effectively the signatures are all possible. It doesn't matter where you get things from, ah. which we don't have because it does matter where we get things from. Yeah. I was going to say, what is the tie-in with signing? And that's the tie-in with signing. Yeah. You, you can't rely on a location or or signing doesn't imply a location or what you sign implies the fact that it's you got it from that place, or it currently does, yes. Yeah, the current no, signing, well, current currently everything about a registration, right? Package signing in like the Linux package manager ecosystem doesn't imply location at all. And that's, uh, can we get to more of that? 
can you, um, just for the sake of others, can you, because oh, one was sharing, can you switch that over to the hack doc? My bad. My yeah, bad. thanks. Um, I was like, furiously typing. Yeah, yeah, I was doing the same. Anyway, um, and I think that's part of the question, I think, that we're trying to figure out. And um, the, the question is either do we try, do we try a move to something that's more like that, or do we just say, that's not possible, let's not bother? Well, the way I worded it is how much, how much change are we willing to impose to make the solution yeah. work? I mean, I, like we've said, we're going to not we're going to break away from Docker Content Trust and Notary because it just doesn't support the basic thing, and we actually don't have as much adoption of anything that we would like. So it's that's really not a break because it's not that much usage. Clearly, there's lots of usage around pulling images from existing registries. So the more well we would love to roll back the clock and make it more like a package manager where the location yeah. is like irrelevant. I don't know how we. I don't think. Yeah, I don't see any. Um, particularly realistic way of doing oh. it, of basically changing the kind of content model so that a, a, that it does that we, we become totally location independent. Realistically, I mean. So even are you contemplating that you think we could? What's your? I, I'm I'm trying to understand what what Justin's proposing, or what you're saying. Well, like, I mean, I, I, thought, I think we're asking I, I, the question, the can question we literally what, make it as good as what, what can we change, what, if anything, can we change about how users use images now? And I think we kind of came to the conclusion last week that we can't change very much. It's kind of the workflow questions you were asking last I week. I think yeah. that's right. I think that it's going to be very hard for us to build something that we expect people to adopt if it requires them re-architecting things about how they refer to the images and about how they are interacting with the deployment tools that they use for actually going to run images. Yeah. So changing things in the and Kubernetes object definitions, like the, the pod specs, is going to be challenging. Changing things in the ECS task definition might be challenging and changing the way that people organize things in their own registries is going to be challenging. Yeah, just the workflows, like the yep. fact that people move things between registries or move things within registries in different paths yep. is like a right. workflow that people have created. It's and also, we don't want to create something that you can only use if you make these changes. Right. Because then that's a recipe yeah. for low adoption, which is one of our requirements is not low adoption. Yep. So, if we can't make those changes, I think um, we we can't make those changes. If we, we can't make these fundamental changes, the va I think right. the value we're bringing is not enough to justify this massive change that it would be. Okay, rewarding. so if you sign, and that signing does not also point to where you got what you signed from, which is inherent in the fact that that's the image, it's here. You know, what is exactly the implication of what you guys suggest? Because I think part of it is they could swap out, like if I, when I look at like the package, other package managers, the location is a separate configuration. I just, I got some configuration, there's a default that says it goes gets from NPM, and if I just say, you know, NPM restore, it, it gets it from there. If I reconfigure my NPM registry, it'll get those one level deep names from alternative, which hopefully those things are there. With that's kind of the simplicity I think we're not willing to change. So let's let's start somewhere different. Um, what do you think a signature tells you? Mm -hmm. Given that you have some bytes and those bytes are signed, what does that signature tell you? Were you asking? So the, I'm, I'm asking the question? room. No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the room as a whole yeah. in the context of signatures, not containers, and okay. not containers specifically. So not, just to fair. try and, yep. and and get us on the same page about what we're talking. I about. I think that's fair. I, I, I specifically was interested to know if you were talking containers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll tell you, a signature from our perspective gives you uh, a specific uh, a hash over a bag of bits, no matter how large or how small. Uh, we know the publisher, uh, the publisher's identity, and we have a mechanism by which we can verify those those truths 
th those things are still true when it comes time to validation. Yeah, and, and I would I would go maybe a little bit farther and say the publisher's identity that you have is only the key. It's not anything that's that, not always true. Yeah, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you mean by the key? <laughs> Everything else is uh, claims that the key has been signed to make. Yep. Right. So technically, it is just the keys that you're trusting. Well, I'm sorry. Now I'm confused. But so if it's, I have, if I'm using certificate, it, that certificate, it still boils down to a key. Yes. Is your point? Yeah. But I don't want to lose that issue. That there is, in some cases, certificates that are used to kind of map to a key. That, but those certificates are the things that we exchange um, and use for identity. But to be clear, right? Yeah. So the, I think my my. What I'm trying to get at is, to me, a signature doesn't really imply anything about the object that is signed, other than it was signed by a given signer. It doesn't say anything about the content of the object. Yeah, except the hash. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it is the same content, but it doesn't say what the content is. Correct. So like correct. if you said this is SQL v. That it's only not, because you trusted the publisher who said it's V2 that it's V2. It's not because there's something right. in the signature yes. that says it's V2. Right. Yes. Right. Well, and that gets a little bit too, well, I don't want to get too far out, but the name thing, like. That, that's what I'm trying to get at is, like, what are we trying to, what attribute are we saying that the signature is giving us, and is that the same as what a signature actually can prove to us from a, like, a cryptography perspective? I, I think we look at the scenarios. I want to be able to pull a thing, and when I pull it, know that it was signed by an entity that I trust. Okay, I'd and, agree with that. Um, what we've got, and I think if we agree on that, 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 that is a good core thing, right? It's not <laughs> like, um, then the question is how I referenced it, how important is that I referenced it as opposed to that it's still signed by the same entities I trust. So for instance, the thing we were just talking about last week was uh, the MyDB, because I'll try to still not use MySQL, should I be somewhat agnostic. The MyDB version one, colon V1, if that's what I reference it as, and this is part of the point that Justin's making, if I pull that from Docker, but I reference that, regardless of what the path is, that when I'm pulling that same thing as its name from my local registry, that I should be able to use that name and trust that that name means something. And I still am going to do the check that says I only trust my DB's cert as dis in addition to Coke or uh, Acme Rockets, whatever, um, so that I can take a certain set of vendors software that I trust, I'll allow that, or software that I sign myself in my company. So in this case, I'm running the MyDB for directly from upstream, um, but I'm building on my own software to run alongside of it. So I want to trust those two keys and only those two keys. So I think you've made a leap from I have an object which is signed by a given signer to I know the identity of the object. Um, is it that I know the identity of the object or all I'm saying is once, 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 once you, once you imply the name, which is yeah. one of the things that you were talking about, that, that connotes something about the identity of the object itself, right? It does. It has a name that's referred to. Like there's lots of Steves, right? And there's a couple <clears> of <throat> Steve Losters. So, um, the if you just reference it by name and you don't check anything else, visually look at me, hear my voice, look at my ID, you don't really know that I'm the same Steve Losker that you know. But if I have some other information that says, oh, this is signed by the Losker family, I don't know, whatever, something that says, oh yeah, that's the one that I do trust, then I'm okay. But the point that I heard Justin, and I'm on the fence actually on whether I want to, the name should be signed or not. And I, I think it's an interesting conversation. If I'm pulling something from Docker up as my DB V2, it's not even V2 as a specific version, it's just a string. That that name should be somewhat trusted, regardless of the path, regardless of the registry. And that there's some comfort in that, that that's the thing that I'm referencing. Because that is kind of the way I reference an NPM package, if you will, from a package management. Where I got it is somewhat irrelevant. I'm get, I got this package. 
So it's not just that so, the publisher of that content is trusted. It is what so, it's what they said that content is is also trusted. It's not trusted. It's just the, there's an implication of trust as part of it. My, my, my example That's last week was if I if I build something, I give it a name, and I set that name in my cube manifest, and I run it. I do want it to be the same thing between those two things without me having to put the content hash of the content in there. Yeah. Because otherwise, I mean, that, other, otherwise, if you just run something else I once signed in the past, that, seem, that's a, that seems a significantly weaker guarantee. It's basically a downgrade or a side grade yeah. attack. A, 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 some sort of replacement. Some sort of replacement attack, yeah. which seems, which seems, um, I think, I mean, ha having it signed by me is better than it not being signed by anyone, but it does seem a very weak guarantee. Yeah. Well, it's not whether you, it's all goes back to that trust conversation that we were having. It's like, a, I trust Justin. Well, no, no, this is like, I don't even, well, this isn't, like, this is literally about, um, just a workflow with just involving me, mm -hmm. and I, I trust myself. But I mean, it's like just having a, a workflow where I can build something in one place and run it in another mm -hmm. and know that they're the same thing. It's not. But in that case, no, you, when you run not, it I'm not trusting another. any third parties at all. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, as part of that run it another place, is the full address the thing that you're trusting, or it's just the left entity? I just, I'm being very vague. I'm just saying I want to be able to run the same thing, know that I can specify to run the same thing as a without I, I, that seems completely reasonable to me. I don't understand why that's broken yet. Like this whole <laughs> notion I, I think you present a, a viable pack, a, a viable path that assets are going to be signed, created and assembled and then at some point in time someone's going to sign off and say we like this it's approved, it's, it's, vul it's vulnerability free, it's all of these things we love and know, and I apply the signature. That signature should remain with that bag of bits so that it can be independently validated. I'm wondering why that does not work today. But it's not that it doesn't work today so much. In fact, I mean, it, but the question, so the question is, um, um, The question is, well, there's a whole bunch of questions like, how do we implement this? Like, so, I mean, the. But if you divorce, so I'm, I'm, if you, I'm trying to simplify. If you this. just, if you just have signatures, what do you do? You have a separate signature for each artifact. There are a number of ways you. Can I mean, that's the thing. That we, 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 I mean. So I, I'm I mean, well, again outside in taking the easier approach. Because pretend the the manifest and all of the assets is all of the assets associated with the signature are kind of autonomous and they can live independent of where you get them from, right? And so that validate the, the validation when it comes time to ensure that the contents haven't changed should be segmented or divorced from this notion of where it came from, right? But that doesn't work. Well, it, that doesn't work today, but I think yeah, we're trying to make the, sure of, of how do we solve the use cases that we think are important with the, you know, the thing that we're designing now? Um, one of the things that keeps that I keep thinking about is assume that we didn't have a registry that these were just like files on disk. Would the file name matter in terms of the signature? The file name. Yeah. People can change the name, but then they can look at the, the file metadata to see where it comes from and where it's named initially. So I can copy a file from Sam and change to two, and then I look at the metadata as somehow I know from Sam, and then if there are signature in there, I can verify the whole Sam made the file, and maybe Sam, so I can change the name. And that's something I kind of keep on coming back to is like, you know, loose things that are on disk, I still want to know that they're signed. Like even the, the regardless of what registry I pulled it from, because in some of these environments, they're bringing bits to the IoT device, you know, and completely other paths. It may not even be a Docker pole. But yeah, I mean, but the, the top solution there is just you also sign a list of names and you point them at the objects, and, and you can 
move that around too. So you can just uh, you get a, assign a list of names. So today in Notary V1, I signed... None of this is relevant. Like in, in, in V1... Yes, it is. It is, it is Sorry, relevant. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, you're signing a, you signed a list of names. Okay. As well as the actual... And those are separate. You're signing the entire yeah, path, to be fair. Like that's, sorry, I, that's where uh, I, I jumped to. That's, you are. Uh, that's not strictly true. Um, there's, there's some complications. But roughly, roughly, you're signing a list of names, as well as the object. As well as the object. So the names and the digests of the name results, too, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, you're, you're signing. I mean, you're signing the information that the you. That you otherwise can't trust from the registry because it's, which is obviously a, a massive duplication. But basically, you're putting a signature on that resolution. So you you have two signatures. You sign two things then. That's, that's right. So there's also timestamps and things like that. But that, the important right. ones from this point of this conversation. Yeah. You sign the actual image, and then you sign some information about no. the said image. It's just a metadata. Just some tags is signed as a collection because the repository is the source of truth and everything, entire collection set of the tags is signed as one drop and it's put into the notary. The problem is the discovery of notary is a different endpoint. It doesn't sit on the registry today. You actually have to go to a different endpoint to get the collection information. Okay. That's the whole issue at this point. So you're signing just the metadata? Thing. Yes. Correct. Leaving aside where the signature is actually placed and the key is, I mean, you just sign the metadata of the image. You don't sign the actual content itself. Well, well, the metadata contains things that you can verify the actual content with. So it is right. the actual content hash plus a yes. whole bunch of other information. Fair. And because that other information changes when you move it from one register to another, the signature is no longer valid, even though the hash could, may or may not be. I think there's some other stuff around the hash as well, right? Well, no, all the information is actually valid. The, the, the only thing that's actually tied is that the is a cert check, which is kind of irrelevant. But in principle, the information is Minus some implementation specific detail, the information is perfectly mobile. Um, the information that's signed is simply the hash and the size and the name. So, leaving the discoverability aside, is that a valid thing to continue? Is that good? The name is fully qualified, which means that if you move it from one point to the other, yes. then you need some kind of federation to go back to the source or know the mapping up front. I mean, so one of the things that I've been trying to get to is the, sig the collection is a full collection of all tags. So when you have, when you're moving a single image, that is not a viable option. You have to move the full collection of that. So it's kind of broken in terms of how you would move a single image at this point. It's not feasible. So this is in the context of moving an object between registries. That or even within the registry. Within within the registry. The registry. So I try to, you promote for the sake it of conversation, I try to... Page to prod. That yeah. doesn't work either. So that's what I have here. I put the... You keep in the, you keep in the name, but it's a different path. Oh, I, I'm not, I can't point because I've got my screen to point at. So the top <laughs> one says Team A. So my DB image went from Team A to staging to prod. Yep. Notice the image name didn't change, but the path within that registry changed. Yeah. And so the second scenario is there's actually separate registries. So everything else is the same, but the registry changed. And the third one, they're using the same registry, same team. They just re-tag it in a different way. And I've seen all three. I think the we we say we want to make sure we solve the first two, regardless of what we do. Right? I think everybody's agreement. There's we have to we want to solve that. We can move things, whether it's a Docker Hub to ACR or MCR yeah. to ECR, or whatever. The naming part, whether we lock the name, the third one is the one that we risk breaking. And for this, to argue for Justin's case, I think, I don't know if I want to call it Justin's case, but for one of the things we're discussing is we all get hit by customers that don't like the fact that tags can change, so they deploy by digest only, which is the human, the human nastiness that I can't actually read it. Uh, and Kub displays don't even show the full path because it's so freaking long. So it's just, it's not very usable. But they don't trust it. If we said we only supported signing the name, then by the fact that it's signed, which is pretty much what Notary V1 does anyway, do we mind losing the fact that if you want to re-tag it, sorry, we don't support that. Like, you would have to re-sign it if you wanted to do that. Because that is such a bad thing to not 
to not support the last. Only the signing is really painful and huh? expensive. Well, I mean, it's a, so yeah, as example, examples, right? But, so. I mean, it can go a lot of different ways. I mean, there may be so many reasons you want to rename something and having to sign <coughs> it again. Yeah. Like, what if I'm trying to name something and the only, like, if, if I, as a de developer, am trying to do this and this is already past QA, I don't need to go back to QA to get it signed again just to do a simple name. Are change. we talking about naming or tagging? Or tagging. Like, nice. oh, are they so different? Tag. Been, okay, but are they to different? be fair, no, the people that actually don't live in the Docker experience, yeah. and normally I would absolutely agree with you, and that's where I had started, honestly, when I did this whole DLL conversation or binary. It's like, hey, I should be renamed. It's still signed. In the Docker workflow world, it's not that strange. Like, there is some assumption around the name of the image, regardless of the path, has some meaning. And the fact that it can change because tags are immutable, I can, other than the signing thing we're proposing, I actually could create my own thing called MyDB 1.0. Um, or I can and, and point it at that tag. So customers get very nervous that that thing can change. If we were saying well, that we are signing them. There's also the case that actually most images have multiple names. Because they're things they're called. I mean, is yeah, the tag that's a fair. part of the name? Is it tab and tag? So by tag, we usually mean the last part of the name. And is that off the catalog? But you mean like dash staging? Dash staging goes after the colon. 10 after the colon. Yeah, I was highlighting the colon. Anything after the colon? Yep. After the call. Yeah, that's the terminology we tend to use. Yep. So it's the last piece of the name. And I know that, at least from some customers, if, if something went from tag from stage to tag to prod, well, that just doesn't happen. That's not supposed to happen. If it happens, that's a bad thing. Like, you're signing the fact that it's in prod. You best not be moving that chappy Changing around a little bit. You can't. You can't. People do. To be fair, people do. I'm, yeah. and I'm actually like thinking, like, if we're going to change something, like, or put some restriction on it, because we get so many arguments from people that they will wind up doing digests, or we add a feature called tag locking, that if we just said that we are signing the name, and if you ch you, well, so, I mean, sign tags effectively give you locking in yeah. a sense. If you as an industry standard, so we're basically be because you all basically all just. Your signature will break if you if you if you change the tag if you change the tag if you well if I mean if you if you sign something called one point zero and you're checking that name as part of the signature resolution then if you pull it as latest it will fail it will fail absolutely. which is effectively makes tags immutable and it's sort of I mean it doesn't and it does well it shouldn't be the um, you have to use an you effectively use an immutable tag to run it if you want to change the signature yeah. and to be fair for the, for the stingers where latest is valid they're going to sign latest as well like I, it, like Joe said latest you know, we we don't never deploy it. but you have to resign it every time you push a new latest so I, I mean you know what there like should be the, some pain in using latest <laughs> well <laughs> there's a it's a Inside containers thing around latest being a weird okay. pattern. Not equally. I was just going. This is a clarifying question, but so it, it sounds like if the, the tags are immutable today and it's nearly locked in now, that this is it. Is it more palatable to say that each? I wish there were a configuration. Customers get to pick, right? If you want this to be an immutable tag, you you pick and choose, and you have some flexibility here. But and they have that tag, tags are not immutable today. Well, except in certain registry implementations that have built features yeah. around that. Mm. So ECR has, I believe ACR has, but it's not something that's part of like the registry right. stack or anything like that. Specifically, state tags are immutable. Therefore, if you push again with the same tag, and the way you so and the way you do it between our registries and the behavior is slightly different between our registries. So, which customers just like got kind of the anti-pattern of working with containers. Yeah. So that's why I'm thinking, and you are more advocating for being very flexible in the existing workflows. Yeah. Are you okay that we don't let people? Change a tag and I, I think that that's going to break people who have workflows around. I'm renaming the image entirely, or I'm changing tags. I think people do that. I do that. What? I, I, like I do that. <coughs> well, but to be the careful, so, what exactly we're we talking about. This is that other definitions and terms. What I'm saying is just this portion. Yeah. Uh, of course, this portion doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That part. Like you can change this. Like this. No, I, I change that part all the time when I'm working with images. Yeah. Like just speaking of my own workflows, I do this. And if you change it, 
If you change Why? it, do you want it to be re-signed? Do you want no? I don't. Or I want the signature. To I want stay. the signature to carry with it and continue to be valid, um, even though the name has changed. Yeah. What is it? Give me an example of why you're changing the name. Just yeah, I want to know that. Maybe I'm making a backup of something. Backup is one. Moving for permission boundaries is one. Moving domain registries is one. Moving between air gaps. Mm -hmm. All of those but are the path. All those are the path. But those are the path. From, 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 from the image spec perspective, the entire path is a part of the image, right? If you're saying that the last segment of the repository yeah. is a path, you're introducing a new concept there. I, I, and the OCI layout doesn't understand that. So there is, yeah, there is currently yeah. a concept. Yes, so if you're introducing a new concept, it's a different thing. The other thing that I wanted to kind of like bring to the table is the fact that the index is already an extensibility model is something that I wanted to propose as a discovery mechanism. The index has a way to say this is the image, it has a way to say this is the metadata, and this is the signature. The second part post the discovery was the validation of the signature and the scheme of the signature. I, my initial, like, off the bat, conversation with Steve was, we have a well-defined model for claims, we have a well-defined to do things like jobs and the schema for claims. The content of the signature has to be separate or defined separately, and it's up to, that's a separate discussion that we should have. So if we sort this out as discovery, we, like, first portion, uh, and index is already there as a way to discover stuff, because we already do that for platform, for architecture, and I think you've already written up a bunch of stuff on that. The tag remains the same, and when you move the tag, you move all everything under that tag, which includes the entire chain of trust and all the contents. Because today you cannot say I'm moving a manifest without moving the layers. You have to move the layers around. Mm -hmm. All implementations make sure the entire chain needs to move. So if you're saying that I'm moving an index, it's only a matter of clients to be able to move the entire chain, including the signature of the index, because it's hanging off the index. Mm -hmm. So it, discovery and mobility kind of get sorted out through that. Or, but what is it that you are you saying that the, and I'm not sure again I'm on the fence today. It does tag doesn't name. Ta tag doesn't matter. We just yes. whatever so the matter whatever the digest is. Whether you want to validate the tag name or not is mm -hmm. a signature level implementation detail, which is if I have a claim that I want to validate that the claim on this is tag is equal to C equal to, then we can go with validation on any engine. That, but you want to make it an additional that, that's that's about signature validation and content validation, which should be separate from the, the discovery mechanism, so that we can tackle these two separately. I mean, we'll never get to any conclusion if you bundle the whole thing together, because I think discovery is a client experience, signature validation is a cryptographic experience, right? So the simplicity for signature validation is not going to be that straightforward, but for discovery, without having people change their workflows, that's what I'm trying to like. Nobody wants to change the workflow. Everybody wants to reference by tag. But have I pulled it with the signature is what we're trying to get. So the in the index already gives you an indirection mechanism. So that's something that I just wanted to kind of like raise. But, or, sorry, but what are you actually proposing? Sorry, yeah. I'm very confused. So yeah, okay. in the index, you if you have an annotation or a media type saying that this is the signature uh, of this type, then why can the tag... A sidecar signature to an, to an yes. artifact. And when you push the signature, you re-tag it with the signed information. Is that good enough? Or is that... Is that what do you mean, sorry, what, can you be more explicit? What do you mean by... So let's say I have Ubuntu 16.04 uh, or something like that, and that is currently not signed. But uh, from a workflow perspective, I have a signing mechanism that can go re-tag Ubuntu 16.04 with the signature information on top of it using an index. Is that is that acceptable? I mean, like part of the thing we're debating is, is it, once it's signed as Ubuntu 16.04, regardless of its path and registry, can you rename that? Yes. Can you change the tag or Ubuntu? Yes, because the discovery is through the index. The index digest is all that matters at that point. If you're pulling by index, then you know that, hey, I'm pulling the signature down, and the signature can have what the original tag was, where it came from, who the uh, claims, set of claims are. It's an extensible model at that point. The only thing that you don't get, or rather, I, I, honestly, you don't have to go back to notary to kind of get the signature from henceforth. That's the, that's the reason why extending on the index just makes perfect sense, even from a discoverability standpoint. Today, I think, I think we I think we all agree that index is the way like, I was talking to Sam. I couldn't understand why I need an index on a manifest. Why not just sign the manifest to remind me once you change the manifest, the yeah. then you change the signature and it's like, ah. So I think that level of detail you provided makes a lot of sense. I think it's literally just a matter of do we think 
uh, some level of strings in the path are have to be locked or do we not? And I'm actually on the fence on this one. I actually really, this is one of the few things they don't have a strong opinion about. Today it's locked, right? No, well, sorry, today the whole path is locked. Whole collection. Can we decompose this conversation into groups, right? So there is the qualified path. Do you want, can you bring up um, the um, the root of the notary spec? Sorry, the, sorry, the, our notary project, I put the definitions in terms in there. Well, it's, 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 it might be consistent. I'm actually saying you can point to it. I, I think there's probably, the, it sounds like the conversation should gear towards, uh, you know, if, we're, if we think we can divorce these things a bit, fully qualified path names sound like it's in a category. Then there's name of the asset, the name of the container itself, my DB, and then there's the tag. And I think they all have different variations by which we're willing to separate them or divorce them from the existing signing experience and, and introduce portability for the asset. Slack channel. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to give you some visual to point them. Yeah, that's Sorry okay. But does that make sense? I think so we this conversation, even from last Friday, we went from fully qualified path name into path name into tagging, and I think we need to decompose parts of this the name of this asset of assets in general. Right. Yes. Right. To, the, to this end, because we we continue to go right through fully path. Uh, fully qualified path name into the name, and then we add on tagging. We need a little focus on. Yeah, I, so I, I broke up a couple of examples there just as a, as a way because we, we do refer to these things differently at times. So I was trying to provide. It sounds like there's a need for portability across fully qualified path names. Like where you actually pulled it from may or may not be as important as the name and the tag is what I'm learning now, right? And so I, can we I, chunk I mean, it up that way? I think we'd agree that everything on the, here, this is the registry, like this we refer to, this is one path of the registry. So there's a path, then there's what I refer to as the actual artifact. This we it has to be able to change because it has to be able to go from Docker Hub to yep, yep. ECR. This has to be able to change because people use different namespaces to represent prod, staging, and different teams. And so we're okay with Changing this and then and these changed. things being independent of the signature. That's right. The, that's the yep. thing, right? Everybody's right. Yeah. Well, I, I I don't hear that all the time. I don't know if we think. I I don't know if I would agree that the repo Kelon tag is a sufficient namespace for the universe. To, Sorry, well, we have, don't don't go there. Um, don't go. But don't I mean, so I don't. You know. I, Well, maybe you, should, not, maybe you want to go there. I mean, I, you know, I just, I'm, I'm not sure that, yeah, I'm just not sure that's enough of a namespace to think, give everyone. This, anyone. this is part of why I was talking about having some sort of canonicalized name, something like maybe, as, as much as, you know, the sort of reverse DNS type, yeah. Yeah. like org dot example dot my application something. This is the name of it, and that is divorced from the location of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But can that be in metadata of the yeah. artifact? Okay. So that's what think it, of this. I literally try to treat this as the cloud file. <coughs> like I, when I put stuff on my server, I put things in different directories depending on what I'm trying to load and where. And I do move them into a backup folder and so forth. And I just view this as this is where I happen to get this thing. If whether, where, what folder I store it in, what path I store it in, what Share the registry. I store them. <coughs> it shouldn't really matter. Yep. Um, I'm a guy programmer, though. I saw everything on the source GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen how that yeah, that, that has worked out well. So if I move an image from Docker Hub to ACR, let's say, mm -hmm. as a company, I am okay that that signature remains valid. Yeah. I would want it to remain valid. I want it to remain if, valid. If a vendor has put an image on Docker Hub. That they want me, that I want to go use, yes. but I don't want to pull it from Docker Hub every time because I'm concerned about things like latency from yep. Docker Hub to my end to <coughs> or, the the cloud it runs on. or availability because I don't have confidence that the registry is going to remain up or that the network link between uh, where I'm deploying things and the registry is going to remain available. I want to move that into some place that's under my control, but I still want to be able to validate the signature. That's the whole point of signing, is you don't care where you got it from. You don't care about the repository. You, it, you are able to verify through the signature. And that, and that requires that you can reference the thing you're signing in some nice, gooey 
It means that we need to divorce, divorce well, the the concept of where did the thing, like where did you download it from, from the part that you're validating. Like, like just to give you an example, we build stuff for MCR on the registry, and full transparency, MCR has no write capability. Nobody's ever going to be able to push to MCR, which means that it's got to come from some other place. Yeah. So you cannot build in that domain at all, but yet you want the signature to say that it's coming from MCR. So how do you do? How do you make this if the signature is not portable and can be signed in a secure environment that doesn't allow you like domain access of that endpoint in any form? So the point is the, the portability of the signature is critical, and that domain can most likely will never be where you're you're not going to run it on the on the front end to kind of be able to build our domain meaning the this part the yeah, DNS part, part of where your registry is yeah. living. So so to me the the image reference, which is the full reference, is what you want. And OCI has a well-defined annotation saying that the container image name reference, something like that. That should be in the claim, because claims are a well-defined way of just validating stuff. And from a, if you're writing an admission controller or something like that, you should be able to validate that. <coughs> the, the OCI name. Yep. That is the canonical set of um, uh, notations that just, you can uh, Just uh, something about a full canonical yeah. material about DNS thing. Is that the same? Sounds like it's the same concept. It's not the same. Although, I don't know what your concept you're referring to. I think you're referring to tag the annotation. No, there's, there's a couple kind of, of fully qualified images. There's an annotation in the image spec yep. that's called org open containers image ref name, name. which I didn't remember. Yep. That's, what that's what you're talking about. What's the definition of it? Independent of the fully qualified name? Name of the oh, ref is the fully target. It is the fully qualified name. Um, so it's, we didn't it's get a way to be a well, name outside of the registry path. Because it's, it's in the content instead of being like just where you download it from. So this is a string that gets embedded into the image content that's here. You guys just said two different things. But I think I heard, but, but what I did hear is a way that bridges it, right? Yes. The fact is, is that it was at one point in time the fully qualified name at its birth. Yes. Right? Yeah. At, at birth, there's an at birth date or whatever. This, this is this a place. There's an at birth place yep. that is described <coughs> forevermore possibly in the context <coughs> of the OCI image names. So what I'm Meaning, what I'm trying to get to is that name can come in through signature because the signature content can be anything. Well, and then, then you can validate so it. Was when you yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No, but that, no, that this is a label that's supposed to be on the a label on the index that you're supposed to sign. It's a light bulb? The light bulb. Label. Label. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So there's a schema for putting these kind of metadata in the image already. That, if it lives as a signature claim, can be validated out of band uh, before you even pull the image, saying that this image has to be X or Y. Other than, yeah, other than, the, other than the fact that there are zero images in the world with this reference on it. Well, well, I think there's, there's zero images with this new Notary 2 signing function either. Okay, but we'll have to... Okay, well, but we'll have to change all build tools to... Well, anybody that's going to sign has to sign. I think the challenge here is mentioned. if we're going to rely on this annotation, which I think is, <coughs> I mean, that's, that's my opinion, that's the right way to do this, you have to have a way to specify that as, as the input to your validation operation as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm expecting this to be the reference when I'm pulling this image, and it's different from the location where I'm pulling the image from. And so it comes back to the two inputs when you're pulling stuff. So which which may be it may it may be could default to where you're pulling it from, is it? It may what? Uh, default to where you're pulling it from, perhaps. But uh, maybe. But maybe well, not, not, if, uh, yeah. not if we're like making a developer experience yeah. is useful. Uh, yeah. but, uh, let me just ask a call thing because I'm not fully on how this thing is created. If Justin signs something and he signs in and says com.docker.foo, what stops me from signing Something that also says com.docker.foo. Nothing so, except you have to check the, the, the you have to check the signature is the one you expect for com.docker. You you check the signature and you may have a policy <coughs> in your in your trust you might have your trust policy that says I only trust this key for all signatures that claim to be com.docker.anything. Yeah. But if, and then if you find really by a different key, key, then it's going to be invalid regardless of what what's there. And those are the two inputs you're talking about signing from? Well, why am I going to pass them two? As long as they know this, like, I'm not, I'm not saying that the string is invalid, that it's not valid, that it's not useful. What I'm getting at is, it seems like more helpful, interesting information, but really, at the end of the day, I trust the Docker key. 
could be right <laughs> until you know until I don't like any of these things I will trust it until I don't and then to Justin uh, Kapos's thing at some point a key will be compromised but, hopefully but, I'll know the date sorry what, what, what question you because you don't trust the docker key I do for I do until the point. for Oracle's content you only trust it for Docker's content. Uh, yes, so scoping is very important. Yeah, so the, it has to be the stuff that, can, so that so that's you think right. comes from Docker. Yeah. By some means. Why? I don't understand the You don't trust me signing something and saying it's my SQL. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying is until, and I'll just keep on using the Docker one just for a second. As long as I trust the Docker cert, and, I, and there's no information that says I shouldn't trust it, so I'm going to start with trust. Now, if somebody steals the Docker cert and starts signing Oracle content, I'm assuming that they're the Docker is going to go out of its way to go make sure that, hey, folks, the Docker cert got you know you, compromised, so now all of our new content that key has been revoked. Here is the new Docker. You should. Content. You really shouldn't trust Docker signing things that uh, on somebody else. Something's bad has already happened. Right. We we've jumped a different scenario because I was trying to use a scenario that for some reason Docker stole was stolen. To sign Oracle, not that Oracle well, no. content was put on Docker. But it doesn't matter. It's like it doesn't matter where where it comes from. Like if you see a sig a signature for Oracle database that says it's signed by Docker, you should not trust it. Regardless, well, I, of, but how do I regardless of how great is, you think oh, Docker is, oh, there's something but, gone wrong there. But what is it that tells me it's Oracle versus Docker? The, the, well, Oracle is just a, an arbitrary string in this case, unless you're saying it's something. Yeah, but you, you need to know that you need to have a mapping between keys and. Straight. You need to know that in this case. And that's what I'm questioning is that something that seems like an extra burden. So this, this is the thing that's a validation of this valid, valid report. Well, I think we, we're working out what the usability of this use case actually looks can like. Can we get Yeah, right. we'll use oh, it. So, okay. But you, I, think, I, I don't think you can just trust yeah. Docker's Please. signature for everything. That would be. Not for it, sorry. That I think that's be, a loaded one. I think the that theory be, is you're assuming, uh, and I wasn't thinking, is, is that just, all the stuff that goes on Docker Hub gets signed by Docker. Is that what you're kind of jumping No. I, no. I'm not uh, suggesting it's a good thing, but I'm concerned. No, but about I mean, that's think. not even a. Like, even that's a. I mean, right now, that's not. That's definitely not the case. Okay. Let me other people, names. The MySQL, the MyDB. Signature for key, the MyDB board signs the MyDB image. Oracle signs their uh, images. They both might put them on Docker Hub. Yeah. There's no Docker key in this case. So it's just right. those two keys are two vendors that I trust, and bad guy uh, is a key that I don't trust. But you only trust them, you only trust Canonical to sign Ubuntu, you don't trust Canonical to sign My Oracle. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, there needs to be a mapping. So I don't understand how you're making a, a, a leap that there's a second name that I know I'm comparing as opposed to it's an arbitrary string of the, the artifact that I've referenced. That's the same could, I, could I add something here, please? Yes. yes. So I, I think there are use cases where you might want both, actually. You might want yes. one or the other. I think. Uh, if I understand correctly, what you guys are trying to say is that, so what Steve is trying to say is that in some cases, he wants a, a way to pin trust, a way to say, if, if I somehow know Oracle's keys, I want to make sure that Docker somehow doesn't pull a switcher on me when it presents signatures, right? That's one thing. The other thing that I think Justin is hinting at is that sometimes you may want to trust Docker to tell you what Oracle's keys are, but in this case, his, his stance is that by default, you shouldn't trust Docker. But if you wanted to, yeah. there there needs to be a transparent way to distribute and revoke keys. Does this make sense? Yeah, I just but I yeah, just am trying to figure out how to that minus the implementation. I, I don't necessarily agree. I think we should uh, divorce the two. Um, there are separate problems. I think uh, we talked about sort of like how deep a PKI we want to set up. Who manages that? And that's a, like how do you validate that this key belongs to Docker or this key belongs to Amazon or Microsoft? That's a separate problem to solve. For this, I think, for the naming perspective, let's assume that's solved and see sort of like what we need to do here. Because that's that's going to be a much longer conversation where we have to talk about like, are we going to trust uh, a, a central sort of like our distributed CAs? Are we going to trust sort of like keys that we get from organizations? Um, I don't think we can cover I, that in sort of like a 10, 15 minute discussion. 200% agree with that. Because arguably, the other end to this is that uh, I, as the person consuming all of these packages, my business is to run whatever I've deemed necessary. Please don't overcomplicate it. So you've got to give me, there's got to be something flexible enough 
that lets me be successful with whatever risk tolerance I have in my portfolio. But let's not leave this, the naming. So I'm still no closer to our, our common view on naming. Right, and I think you were just about to walk yeah. us through name, oh, yeah. a, a name construct that gives us, I mean, what your your example, right? Yeah, I was starting to write stuff, but it doesn't cool. matter. No, that's uh, why. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. I, what I'm struggling with is how do we correlate the second thing has a, a, a semantic meaning as opposed to it's a, it, the string happens to have the word oracle in it. Like it, you're arguing that there, there's some actual real meaning that the doctor. Um, can we start with the so, easiest use case first? Yeah. And yeah. let's start with, because I, I think it gets complicated when you start to have multi-vendors and multiple keys and different rules and I trust things differently. Just give me a standard package so, that I'm applying a signature to that I think needs to move. Today, I'm going with Justin's images. I hope you don't mind that. That's okay. You want to pull an image that Justin has pushed there. You can write Docker pull. Justin who? And the Docker client transforms this into a location on Docker Hub. It's just, okay. That's the hard-coded default in the Docker client today. And one thing that we could do is we could say, well, um, when that happens, we're also going to transform the name of the image that we're expecting there to be a signature, and it's going to look something like that. And we can validate that there is a key, and it's like Justin's key that we know. And we can say, yes, Justin P was used to sign this image. Is this? Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, what is, that right? that what is Justin's key sign image have to do with this string that you put at the top for com.docker.justin? Oh, except, hang on, I have a question. This name is not exposed to the client, right, in any form? Could be. Okay, so this is something that there's a by convention or some annotation or some kind of entity that you're going to look at when you validate the signature. Yes. yes. And if there is no validation, then you just continue pulling. Right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. So th this is assuming that this is the value of that annotation that we were talking about. Okay. Say, if you want to pull from, I put it somewhere in a different registry on a different location, how do I know that this image should actually be transformed to that? So I think you have to have it as a second input here. And you have to say something like name. Cool. Well, minus minus from or something. Yeah, something yeah. like that. From being, you're getting it from a place, or yeah. that's the annotation name. It, annotation. We could do it either. Name. Could be either way. Could be either way around. Yeah. Some you have to specify them both. But which one is the? What we choose as defaults and things is a UX question, not a. Yes. This was this was the root of the question I was asking earlier: is how much impact we're we making on the industry. Like, do we expect Google deploys, Compose, every other thing that knows how to deploy images to now specify things as two names? Well, regardless of what you do, the moment you say, here's the new spec, and this is how you're going to use it to prove and to sign and to validate the signature, you've changed the CLI, even if it's, and you want to keep that to the um, prime, right? To some extent, if we can keep the referenceable path the same, then the kube deploy files and all those other files don't change. You mean just More the implementation configuration that host thing. Like I'm going to say that this host that runs my containers, whatever it is, ECS, KKS, whatever, that all those kube deploy files that are people are using across, or whatever the, the scripts are, don't change. But I can say on my hosts, I only trust things that are signed from these entities. So, hold that thought. In this, I specified go get me Justin. Call him foo, mm -hmm. but get it from there instead. Right. Correct. Okay. But let's say this was signed. Justin and foo is signed. Are we stating yes. there that that signature has quote unquote ported over yes. because yes. that image is in a separate location? But the so signature has moved over with the image client. And this client trusts the key. This this client knows to read this value That's from fine. from there. Yep. And has a key that it believes is valid for this and can use that key to validate the signature that is present. Okay. Actually, how did that happen? How did what happen? How did, how does the Docker pull of Justin colon foo from that registry validate that com docker justin foo is still valid? I don't well, understand how that information. How did it get the key? I'm trying to understand the difference it? between, 
Is this the idea that you're because you reference it as mirror slash something else? No, it's no. The keys in no. trust, right? Nothing in this, yeah, this, this, this is arbitrary also. characters. Yeah. So we didn't address it. You have to be able to get a mapping from you have to get a Justin Kellan Fee to come to Dr. Justin Kellan Fee. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Um, so I, I, I made it up. Assuming, that's fine. I made it up assuming Docker Hub. Yeah. Right. But, but assuming it, sort of that. But in, because we're trying to talk about the simplest case. The simplest case in Docker today is when you give it sort of a bare image name and it says that means Docker Hub. And so but you can have similar transformation logic in the Docker client. earlier, is that something that I'm just passing when I sign it or because that's the yes. registry it went to at first? You're scoping it to become the trusted name when you, you might, get it from it, a target. No, I'm asking how no, that's it, that because you can always, you can always, to be you can always sign it explicitly with a name, okay. uh, but it might be the default if <coughs> you have Say automatically set it up. If you okay, put so it I can Docker sign it regardless of what registry it's yeah. currently in. Yeah, so you okay. can always sign something as MCR. Right, even though it doesn't get pushed. Even though it never gets pushed by M to MCR first. It does eventually, but it's so that first. that first argument, or if you say from, that is a that's not a required. Oh, only when you need mm -hmm. to validate the signature. It's a validation process, isn't it? Uh, from is just pointing to its new location. Yeah, but you don't need to specify I'm, I'm that to, you're doing signature validation. Yeah, that's to me the the fact is Fair. the last name is the workflow. The first part is the validation step where hey, I want to validate that it's coming from Justin Fu, but that's where I would deploy from. I would never deploy from that. So just from a usability standpoint, I think flipping it around. I, is, I think yeah, that's why. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. And I think, that makes sense. And, and I think where uh, I, I was going for last time also was like, um, you may want to use that extensibility to just to say, here are the additional set of claims I want to validate. And yep. that could be anything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So and that's captured in the metadata. So just to drive this consensus, we're thinking that the location, the signature has to stay with the object. Even though the object may move, yeah, yes, the yeah, object will move. We all like that lovely yes, idea. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Wait. Yes. I think right. it's a hundred percent. Right. Yes. The second thing is because the container image name <coughs> has location in it, we have to divorce, divorce the two. Some, split that out so you can sign it. We're thinking there's an annotation in the OCI spec today already that may enable you to do some canonical naming of that object. Now, in signing, we may have to use that or like. Like Sam's like writing out here, when you do a build, you say, This is my canonical name, that is said key, sign it up together. Now mm -hmm. you're done. Right? But when you do the pull, you have to be able to go back to that map and say, I'm getting a canonical name of this. Mm -hmm. Where's my key that says I can trust it? Right? Yeah, I don't have a question about that so much as getting to the canonical name. But I think at the uh, end it would be a slightly different flow. It's less about here's the canonical name, where's the signer, it's more about I trust the signer, you check the key, and then which canonical names do I trust from the signer if you wanted to go down that deep, and then you see if they match. Because some people may say, I just trust the signer, I'll deploy anything, anything. with their name. For some you may say, I only trust these canonical names from this publisher. But and that goes to Trishank's you might, options. You might yeah. say, for example, that like I have my own key that is my QA key, and this key is validated is valid for asserting any claim. Yeah. Right. Right. That's my key. I control it. So I'm going to generate a signature. It doesn't matter. Right. Like self signature. Right. What keeps me from signing it as what is the domain we're using? Dot com. Dot docker. Dot just. You won't have the signing. You won't key. have the signing key. Oh, I see. Because you're correlating the two together. Well, when you well, go find the image, you're going to give it a key that you sign with. Oh, and validate it. I don't. I don't trust your public key to have signed that namespace. Agreed. But let's say you do sign trust my key. I'm Oracle. You, you actually need Oracle software from Oracle and Docker. At this but point. I don't trust Oracle to sign com.docker.justin. So I, trust I, trust Oracle Oracle sign, I trust Oracle to sign com.oracle. What, what does... And I don't trust Justin to sign com.oracle. I only trust Justin to right. sign com.docker.justin. So, so where's the mapping of the signatures? You have, de you have defined that in your trust policy. What is the benefit of defining two names versus I just I trust Oracle to do the right thing for their their signature. Each pack you're only you're not sole vendor. You're getting packages from oh, multiple yeah, vendors, right? Okay. So all it's a smattering of who you trust 
and the packages. What I'm, what I'm getting at is, I have, let's just say I have two images named If you want to, I mean, this isn't the weakest model we could build. <laughs> there is a weaker model. <laughs> yes. Basically where you basically just trust anything that's signed yeah. with, a, with, with a particular key. Um, so, for example, okay. you'll so run, saying I only you run any signature. software from Microsoft, regardless of whether it's Flight Simulator or Excel, mm -hmm. and then you don't need a name. You oh, because you're trying to differentiate. Cause the, the scenario you're getting is Oracle's now sticking Docker strings in there. I think if they start doing it's, that, it's I should It's Larry. He could do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him. He'll tell you. I thought they kill all of them. So, um, one second. <laughs> but you, you're making a different point that... I don't trust the games from, I don't want the games from Microsoft running in my environment. I only want, and I trust that Microsoft is putting the right uh, name, name, domain name things in there. So I can exclude certain things I just don't want in my environment. I so, opt in or opt out. So, one sec. I mean, we, we, could, we, we could support the, the really weak model too. I mean, I think it's something that has come up a few times. Um, I wouldn't, so what do you mean by the really weak model? The really weak model is we don't have a name. And so it's just, as long as just the a, signature is by As long as the signature is in your signature policy, which might be just sign, uh, just run stuff signed by me, is right. the, the simplest policy, yes. or just run things signed by Microsoft if you're... Mm -hmm. like generally, it'd probably be... The only one that really makes sense is just sign, run things signed by this key, which I'm going to use for prod. I don't care about anything else. Uh, I don't care what it is, but it's just if it's signed for prod, I trust it's gone through my workflow and it's right. okay. And that I mean that model is is significantly weaker because it doesn't protect against rollback or uh, cross attacks or whatever. But it might be it, it might be more usable or more. But, well, it's, leaving, but it's definitely weaker. So, so leaving aside how we validate the keys and who trust pins and all, to your point, it's going to be something you have to solve regardless, right? The, the bigger point is we all love images have to get moved, the signature moves with said image, right? And the way to do that would be using some sort of annotation already in the spec, right? And what is the consequent usability change for a client's workflow? When I I'm actually I'm, I'm kind of making an argument that I don't know if we need this string. I'm questioning how much extra value it gives us because it changes the UX for people are used to. Correct, but we, a, we shouldn't solve that. You can that. still get the signature without it, though. We don't have to solve that right this minute. We have the breakout groups to actually try and solve that. Uh, I'm more worried about the, the, the he, breakout. He is trying to advocate for the even weaker model, I think. Well, you keep on referring to the even weaker. It is weaker. I don't know if it's weaker it's, versus it's not. It, it's, it's definitely separately. weaker. It definitely doesn't stop rollback attacks. Where's you the can rollback run, attack in this case? So you, will, you cannot distinguish between MySQL Three and MySQL four because they're both signed by Oracle, so they're effectively identical. So I can I can basically hack into your registry and stick MySQL three under the label MySQL four, and you'll still run it, and it could have vulnerabilities in it. If, if you were able to, if you got MySQL key, but if you no, have no, MySQL, MySQL key, I'm going to not trust you anyway. MySQL three is already signed by Oracle. I can find an old signed copy. Oracle signs all versions of MySQL. Yes, I, I I don't know that we went that far. I don't know that this was a case. Um, uh, again, tell me if you shut up. But so this is not simply a case to, to speak to the the provenance of an asset, which is kind of what we're talking about, right? First step here was divorcing name from yes signature. Mm -hmm. That being said, I clearly think we need some illustration of provenance, which is kind of the next discussion, right? Provenance knowing that this package was signed by whom? Do I trust that person, yes or no? Frankly, did, does my corp, when Goldman Sachs gets something and they sign something, do they override every sig? Like, you know, is there, some, is there some notion that Niaz was raising a moment ago before about how complicated can the PKI get and then what does validation look like? I think that's the next conversation. This, this fits well, right? Well, I think, well, I think, I think been, oh, good. Yeah. Sorry, what Justin was saying was slightly different in the sense that um, I have signed a version of my software, and that and that's. I totally get that. Let me close version. up why my point is intended to reflect that. I only I've only approved version 3.0 for my organization, Aaron.Lynch.org. I'm only ever going to allow you to like I'll sign off on the the packages. 
but you can't do that with the base verification is what we were getting at. With the base verification, you're Yeah, really but I wasn't relying on base. So you approved MySQL 3.0 at some point, and now you move to 4.0 knowing that there's a vulnerability in 3.0. The 3.0 that you signed at some point is still out there. Mm -hmm. Someone can put that back in. That signature is still valid. But I could actually but have what a policy I'm saying, I want to, says, my, I want if, the, if the name say part of the signature, and the example that still says MySQL colon V3, and then there's a MySQL yeah, you were, you were arguing for a version without names. I was arguing for both, because I actually... Yeah. <laughs> so, so, okay. But I'm advocating back for names, because okay. in that case, you're what you could say back for names again. Okay. Then, the my, then what I don't have to revoke a key, but what I can do is have a policy, using OPA, whoever it is, whatever, I don't know what your policy manager you guys use, but whatever, let's just pick up a policy manager, and I don't allow them. The colon V3. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure why I don't revoke. If I know that that's a known, like, don't I? Why, why don't I revoke that? Well, because the, the problem is, is that you might need that running in a different environment because you haven't figured out how to mitigate that environment. The app depends on it. So you don't want to just revoke the key hole. You start putting policies and it says, hey, this environment allows us for the next 30 days because, you know, Sam has some remediation time to fix his app that depends on it. But this other environment doesn't actually have any problems. There, we can actually put a policy that environment B is a lot, only allowed to run V4, or is not allowed to run V3, whichever rule direction you want. So to that, that assumes that there is name level validation. Yeah, so I was okay, so, using so, that so, so, have you, have you, so have you agreed that we at least require names? I mean, that's the thing. Cause, uh, we don't the, get I, the, I like the flexibility of some of the stuff we're talking about. It scares the hell out of me to have to ask every team that has designed this, a templating text file that they <coughs> specify the names of their images that we're going to ask them to somehow put this other thing in there. And if it depends on it, I don't think they will and I don't think... Well, this is assignable. You mean when they're doing the build? If I'm doing a... Not, not even a build. The builds I'm less worried about because they right. are going to have to change their builds to do signing at some point. But the validation workflow, workflows that go through the Kubernetes deployment files, that go through on every the PI CD system on the pull on side. The pull. You were saying, Sajra, that there would be another way you design the pull. You'd write the pull in yeah, the Yeah, I would the pull as to, I would just go to my source, but the signing one would be the other side. So, so it's, just, it's just yeah. inverting, it's just a minor detail, yeah. just for the usability side, right? So I would still say Docker pull uh, and my image. So in that case, it would still be registry.com slash. <coughs> and all the enforcement options would be signature validation options or signature name options, which would kind of be flagged on, on the back. So I can say uh, validate tag uh, with name or something like that. And the name can be fully qualified in a of the true source. It can be keys. But that's something that we can either define as a, as a configuration or whatnot. But the reason is that if I don't pass these in and there is an environment that is kind of like as a dev environment, then it doesn't stop me from, I wouldn't have to change all the tool sets. It just keeps the default Docker model of, you can still deploy with an image and not worry about passing in names. I don't want to change the basic. So it's been an hour and 15 since we started. I have a quick question here for clarification. Um, how does Docker, like if I do Docker pull, how does it know which keys I trust? Today? Yeah. Trust me now. Like, well, we're trying to get away from that model, right? So you almost have um, to specify something to tell it what you trust. Yeah, not that we're trying to get away from a model per se, it's the model we have isn't flexible enough. Right. So that's more of the problem. So it's not like we're really trying so to... So if you introduce the that flexibility, does that necessarily mean you have to change the CLI to get that flexibility? Yeah, you need to trust to... Think we need to it's like, okay, so today you do Docker pull, and you're building from Docker Hub. I mean, uh, at the moment with Notary, uh, I mean, it, there's... I mean... TAF assumes you know the keys and that there should ideally be one of them um, in an ideal world or at least one root key. Uh, Docker um, with Notary V1 assumes uh, largely trust on first use because of the larger number of keys, which, as we discussed last week, I think is a really bad mod model for something where most hosts are ephemeral and first use is possibly every use. Yes. So. Um, so the, the the having a small number of keys is definitely um, an advantage in terms of because you don't want um, I mean, you don't want to have to specify hundreds of keys to basically. Yeah. 
So yeah, if you want to use a different key, each one of the artifacts. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry, something on the remote. Yeah, oh, oh, thanks. Back. Thanks. Sorry. Could I could I slightly clarify how how it works? What Justin is saying is correct. Um, so the way that works is that this basically at least four different keys for four top level roles, right? And the root certificate is basically like the, the root certificate for docker.io. And that's really the one, well, yeah, they should really be one root for docker.io. And the way it works right now is that everyone manages their own root per image, which is not ideal for the reasons that Justin described. So there's a way to do it where you have one root, docker root, and you can split the trust and you can say, well, Docker, give me the key for Oracle. I don't care. I trust you anyway. Or you could, you could add pinning mechanisms and say, Docker, nope, just, just give me signatures. Give me the images. I'll check it myself using keys. I somehow got out of them. Um, no, I get how it could work. Um, my question was more around, do we need to change Docker pull to even address the base scenario? Yeah. I know that's exactly what you're saying. It's like yes. today customers do Docker pull, and regardless of what you do, if you want them to get a signed image, no matter how you do it, you're going to require a different Docker pull. Do so you like not, I don't know. I think so. Thought because we were playing with this a little bit. Like today, there's this environment variable you get set. So the, you still view a Docker pull, and there's a background thing that changed the configuration behavior. So when I think of like the the thing is. I, as a developer, I'm saying, here's the image I want you to deploy. I just want to give you the image. Now, Aaron. Uh, sorry, huh? Aaron. Oh, Aaron, sorry, yes. Um, Aaron required for security, so he's saying, hey, in this environment, uh, you can still pass the Docker pull, but unless it matches these collection of keys, it's not going to happen. So it's nice, and what you can do is then you configure those, you know, various hosts to say at, at the host at the running operation level um, that the pull command still is the same command, but there's this background configuration that says I'm only allowing these keys or these paths, the, and the OPA policies can do a similar kind of thing. The person who runs the pull should not have the ability to pass an arbitrary key. Yeah, it should be at yes. the environment level configuration. Otherwise, the policy of the admission controller cannot enforce certain policies. That's right. So ideally, the pull command should not change. It should be the same. The, the aspect of things like trust pinning will enable you to set what keys are permissible at what scopes. Now, the problem is you're not mm. getting to trust pinning at a scope level because of the way notary and trust pinning is working today. My hope is that we can come to trust pinning V2, if you're doing notary V2, where each image you can specify has to come from the signature and things like that. That way, when you author an admission controller, you get much more uh, granular capability. So the user doesn't change it. It should be at the controller okay. level. So now we're talking about how to make it happen. Yeah. We're not talking about the fact that we all want to make sure that you can sign something independent of where it's hosted. Yep. Move um, it around, keep the image, sign the signature with the image, and we're done. Yep. Okay. It's like doing a renovation to your house. There's a certain amount of things you can change and certain yep. things you can't. And I'm just trying to figure out what do we really need to take out that, that wall that's the, supporting the roof, and we've got to put in a beam to change it. I don't know, whatever the right analogy is. Um, I'm nervous about trying to change any of the Delight. in between the time it's built and the host that's running it. Any of those experiences that require changes is in the context the of risk. in the context of configuring trust or in the context of identifying the unique um, identifier. The security people like you two who really don't give a shit about containers. You're just trying to support this environment. You're going to impose some rules on this production environment. This team that's been building all these containers for a while. They shouldn't be impacted. You should go work to the host operate, the host thing that's running this workload and make the security configurations there. And we should not, and because the, if, we, if we could roll back seven, whatever, many years ago when this thing started, you know, there's a lot of things we would change. But to minimal impact on changing the environment, that's the main metric I'm just trying to poke at some of these changes we're, we're proposing. So, uh, just and maybe I'm too early on, on being concerned about that. Based on what I just heard, like why can't we then just configure the policies as environment variables as well and let Docker pull stay the way it is? Is there something else that stops? It? Environment variables don't really work for like Kubernetes. Yeah. For yeah, environment yeah, variables. Just the amount of configuration is important. It's like something you change on the host. Whether you change by environment. It's got to be. A, it's got to be it's some sort of config that we can use for different isn't, isn't types of environment. Isn't that another persona altogether to the to the point? Here? So there is there's a series of tasks to enable trust for the lack of a 
better description here, right? That that's a separate role, a separate persona, working in at at an administrator level for these secure to enable these security policies. Who do I trust is a fundamental question we should all be asking, right? That but that workflow has got to be there choice? anyway. When do you make that choice? Set up <coughs> of of a certain environment. Set up and change. Yeah. Based on change. Based on one thing. So it's three twenty, right? And <laughs> we've done a lot of talking, and I don't <laughs> think we've gotten a lot of questions or at least feedback from the remote participants. One, <laughs> right? And so, well, it got to the point where it, um, was that. Uh, Trishank actually put something in the note saying we need to make sure we talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Trishank. That was cool. Do we want to take a five-minute break? Yes, we do. Uh, we should probably yes. We'll take a five. I'll try and take what Sam wrote up, put it in the notes, and then we'll see what's the next thing. Because it looks like we're in violent agreement about what needs to get done with the name and the signing, and now we're get, getting discussing about how it happens. Well, I, I, I okay. Are there any other I open think questions thought, at the I'm macro still level? Still struggling on this conversation of which way, what, what is locked and what is not. For those on the bridge, we've taken a five minute break, but I can, I'll keep the, I won't mute here so you can listen. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Well, after we start, I'll get a circle from the remote to see what we didn't ask. Them. I went through one round of the board uh, set of folks then. I think encryption and people I mean I guess you guys should also kind of like this is something we might have to discuss um, the digest of the image you want to consider this a secret or because there's an attack vector that can be discussed in that mm. it's a discussion mm. uh, not for this one yeah well so I'm kind of just and this is also generally my fault because there's been other stuff that I'm slammed with, but there's an existing state of play with Notary V1 that for many reasons the industry is not adopted. Yes. We're going to do a Notary V2 in large part to ensure that the industry does adopt. Yep. Okay. Therefore, there are certain things it did that are good, just keep those, certain things it does not do no. very well which we have to change. What the heck are those things that it didn't do that we want to change? So far, I've heard one. one. It has to be able to move, yep. and we like it. Sweet. Now the next step is how do you implement that? That's okay. The spec has to be able to state that I can move it, and here's the artifact mechanism by which this will occur. Here, I'm not worried about the second part. I will solve next. What is the other bad thing about V1 we didn't like that we need to be able to change? I, I don't want that because that's a requirement. That's a core statement. The single point of trust is one issue with the way notary is implemented right now. Also, the collection is the other thing. When you have a large number of tags, you're signing the entire set. There's a lot of issues. No, no. These, these, these are important. We've got one month before we get to KubeCon, and right. I, well, I we got it. have to have these stuff. I believe we already got an NPR for this. <laughs> like, in my own head. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, keeping it because I got an NPR for this. In my own head. So we have to move. Hmm. Actually, even artifacts, right? Okay? Spend time on the categories. We, we, we had we did a lot of this on Friday too. Well, I was, I was hoping we would go through. through the scenarios today. Uh, scenarios where we were, I think, we were trying to capture all of these. These things? Yeah. So what? Okay. Perfect. What's the scenario? That was like item two in our. Sorry, somebody saying something on the bridge? Yeah. The one thing that I'd also like to touch on after uh, we we start a conversation is, what is the actual object that we sign when you sign a container image? Because right now, that's a different uh, ID, which is local in general, when you build the image, and the actual content digest, which is the hash of the manifest, which is generated when, after you push. Right? So yeah. A great a bunch of times. Specifically, you can have two different image digests generated for the same image by two different registries. Okay. Tied into the way registries compress layers. So even how is that content? If you try, if you attempt to move an image between two different registries, you could invalidate the signature simply by the registries having different compressions on the same layers. 
Right, I think the way we were looking at what to sign was leave that discussion for later uh, and identify what the requirements were and then when we get into yeah, kind of like... Coffee. This one's out over here. We'll make it. So there is coffee on the second floor uh, where there's a cafe. And that's like a whole long way. Yeah, give me a sec. All right, Radu, I got that. I've got to go make coffee. I want you all to know we're all counting on you. <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. I'm, I'm between I'm between meetings, so anyway, thanks for coming and walk on stuff. That was all who are you? Uh, I'm Bob Wise. I'm the GM for Kubernetes hi. at AWS. So and I've like stuck my head into meetings from time to time. Like, hey, yeah, we met briefly. Thanks, yeah, we did meet. Yeah, yeah. And then so I at least meet, met some of the working groups, so apparently not everybody. Oh uh, we're I'm in AWS. Oh you you're with AWS. Yeah. Okay. So nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, it's like I tend to get involved in all manner of open source fun stuff, so. <laughs> as is uh, indicated by my title here. So, all right, thanks. By the way, I, I, you shouldn't mistake what I was saying a moment ago. You should trust vendor signed packages over, like it, it right, the ultimate source of truth is the signature is generated by the person who holds the key and is responsible for that package. Like those things, those, it, that, that, that is kind of an ideal state. Uh, I was just looking for flexibility. Well, I, I think that has to be true. I also might need to say, in this case, maybe I just trust whom, like, there's a validation scheme that I, as a business, might just go with, right? So I, I trust that Justin is doing the best thing for my organization, and my time to market is greatly, you know, hastened if I just kind of go this path. I don't disagree with this whole notion of I shouldn't rely on Docker to sign for anybody else, anybody else at all. Yeah, I mean the question is really how we. I mean there are there are a lot of different workflows and levels of complexity that people will want to implement, and we need to provide ways that they can do people can do simpler or more complex things. And I think that's. Um, um, I think that the, in a sense, the more complex things are easier because you can uh, you can clearly go and examine lots of information and make detailed decisions and then um, sign to say that you have done that, for example, which actually could encapsulate a very complicated workflow. Um, or you could do that at the point of, um, I mean, you could validate all this stuff at the point of uh, running as well, but maybe you wanted to earlier. But I mean, those, those kinds of complex, config, highly configurable, highly detailed workflows uh, are kind of more straightforward because people are prepared to invest more in doing them if they're going to do them. And, yeah. Um, uh, but we need sim we need simple workflows for people who are not prepared to invest a lot as well. I'm kind of less worried about the complex ones because I think 
we can if the opportunities are large enough they'll sort themselves out as well right yeah and they and and adding adding options to do more complex things is easier than adding options to do simpler things yeah okay. trying to remove that part of it. agreed agreed um, I totally agree. And by the way, we built, we break these things down to a common building block that is arguably reusable, right? And so this mm -hmm. kind of notion of decomposing these that complicated scenario into almost where you were going, minus the the marketing term weaker. <laughs> but but to your the the alternative way of marketing that is, is here's a straight straightforward example. Um, well, yeah, I mean that's the thing. I, I do think that um, that we should. Consider that this is not the simplest case that's useful. I mean, one more time. Oh, this is not the simplest case that's useful. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's what. Simplest case. I think that maybe, I mean, maybe the maybe if the weaker one is much easier but still gets you something, is that worth having anyway? I mean, effectively, it's um, I don't know, maybe, maybe it doesn't give you an, a, enough to be worth anything at all, maybe it's... <coughs> Does anyone other than me want laptop stickers? I have some OCI laptop stickers. That would be me. I'm, I haven't got any from my mind. I, I, I got a new laptop a while ago, and I'm, I'm completely re-stickering. Yeah, OCI laptop stickers. Sure. Where did you pick this up from? Do you have any Amazon laptop stickers? Uh, at my desk, yes. I didn't bring them up with me. But if you want some, you, you got next, next break I will go get some Amazon ones too. Because you got some quite nice ones. Which ones do you like? I saw you looking at them earlier. Uh, actually, your Seattle Gopher is particularly nice. I don't have one. extras of those. But, um, <coughs> the, uh, the, um, The ECR one is nice. I like the ECR one. Which no, this one? Or this one? Oh, I can see if I, this one's a really. This is an old one. These two are really old. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember the ECS one. Yeah, he had a T-shirt with that one. This one. This one's. This one's not being used anymore, but we still have this one. I think I still have some of these somewhere. I don't, I'll I'm fairly somewhere. sure I had a t-shirt with that one on at one point. Um, I don't think we had a t-shirt with this on it. We had a t-shirt that was sort of similar, but not quite this. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Not, yeah. There was an, another sort of spaceshipy design. Oh, okay. <coughs> um, okay. It, it would have been a while ago. We should get some fruit. I just ate some fruit. It was very nice. Get some more. Damn. Fruit, veggies, something <laughs> healthy. Water is healthy. That's what I have right now. Yeah, okay. okay. Feel fair? Is that where you want to be? Yes. Where is that? I know. I downloaded this. Oh, this is not a. He's like, that's not where I am, though. Yeah. This is my back. That's the backdrop. But so I've spent a lot, a lot of time on the East Coast, specifically the Southeast, right? And so those white, fine grained beaches. Is that right? Florida somewhere? I don't have no idea. But okay. this reminds me of the Bahamas. Crystal blue water. Sorry, we're waiting for actual coffee. Yeah. Well, I think it would. I think it's because well, it's freshly brewed. All right, we'll get started again. Uh, on the bridge, there was a lot of talk over here. What do you want to make sure we didn't miss around the yeah. concept of making sure the image can be moved from one place to the other, but the signature stays, I guess, valid. Yeah. The, the specific example was 
uh, because right now we sign the hash of the manifest and registries can very well generate different manifests for the same content. It means the signature is automatically invalidated just by the fact that ah. different hash. That's, that's, yeah, that's, that's not really true. And it's also, um, to some extent, not our problem to work. With. I mean, fundamentally, that shouldn't be. Wait, that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's a. That's a tooling bug. Yeah, it's tooling bug. So I think we we. So, I, I guess most of this comes when people have to manifest and reconstruct it because of things like JSON prettify and all the stuff that kicks in. So technically, if you pull the manifest and push it as is, the content should be the the content digest should be the same. It should not change. But, well, but there, well, there, there are scenarios where it does happen. And part of the problem is, and maybe this will change between the old Docker stuff and the container D stuff where it's the compressed still sticks around, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. the other thing that can happen is when Docker pulls stuff, it uncompresses and untars the layers yeah. and then throws everything away. Yes. And container so D doesn't. Re, right? Container D doesn't. When you, yeah. re, when you want to go push that, it has to reconstruct and it might tar the files in yeah. a different order. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that choose different compression settings, and all of that's going to change your digest. It's, it's tool, it should be a tooling bug. Signing, signing, signing the manifest also means that you can't really sign the artifact at build time, but you have to do it at push time as well. No, that's also that's again a tooling artifact because, like, you're, you've just got tooling that doesn't give it to you at build time, but it actually should know it by then. And again, it, the, the Docker engine has that. Now, but container D does not do that. Just use container D, and you will, all your problems will be solved. Yeah, I think so. Sure. Sure. <laughs> container D will give you the hash at build time. Or, or any tooling that uses container D will do that. So, wait, uh, but the macro question is is signing the manifest enough, or do you have to sign? Signing the manifest is the correct thing to do. Fundamentally, I don't think that it, it's like. What are the options? I mean, there have been a few people who want, have have come up with slightly strange use cases where they want to sign individual layers and things like that. But I just don't think we should support anything like that. It's just too complicated for UI purposes. You, you but fun, fundamentally, you want to sign. You you just want to sign the manifest because that's like effectively what the image is as far as um, the registry is concerned. Well, there's one case that I can think of where maybe signing the manifest just by itself is not super great, and that relates to when you're doing image inheritance. So if you take an image, you like have a Docker file that has the first line is from, and you want to build a new image from it. And you want the signature of the old thing to still be valid. Isn't that more providence than rule? Have the original signature be valid because we're not preserving all of the things that are in the original manifest as well. And that relates mostly to the config struct is not preserved. So if you also preserve that, you could address it. Or you could say, I only want to sign the collection of the layers instead of signing both manifests as a whole. I don't really know if I think you're this is the right answer. I don't think those are the right answer. I think the the right answer in those cases is to, um, you know, use something a lot like Entoto at build time that basically will make assertions about the things that it used to make the build from, and and to have a reproducible build scenario where you can re-extract that and and some tooling that can look at images and tell you things. About them, so I, I just I just don't think that uh, I just think it's too complicated to be done in um, as part of normal workflow. Just because the because of all those things you brought up that basically make it like there isn't a compositional model in OCI that kind of gives you those properties now, and okay, maybe you should. Maybe we should construct a compositional model that's more compositional, but we haven't got one right now. And I don't think it's, I think it's our job to sign things that exist, not things that might be useful if they existed. 
Here we go. So are we saying we have to sign the manifest or the digest of the manifest? Um, we're actually um, very hand wavy. We, by signing the manifest, we actually mean signing the digest, the size, and the media type of the manifest because that's what the register, that's what the spec actually refers. Say that again. Descriptor. Uh, are you wait? Are descriptor. You yes. Whole, are you saying the whole descriptor? I believe the, we. I believe it's the correct thing to do is sign the whole descriptor, including the platform annotation things that are in there and the other annotations as well, or. Do we sign indexes today, or is it only um, the I, I think probably the whole thing is the correct thing to do, but I think that's something that we need to uh, sit down and talk to. Derek's got a lot of opinions about that. I think Derek's of the opinion that we should sign the whole thing. <coughs> the whole thing. The whole descriptor. The descriptor, which is somewhat different. But I think it doesn't technically make any difference, like, to the, from the sort of, Cryptographic point of view, we're fundamentally you're signing the hash, um, but you might be signing a little bit of extra data as well because that's how the registry actually retrieves stuff and works. But, um, but it doesn't. It's additional information in addition to the hash. So, and it has some annoyances, but I think it's probably the right. And that's <coughs> thanks a lot, Dr. Brookard. The, the first question was whether signing the manifest or a hash of the manifest is the right thing to do. And thanks for the answer on that. The second one is, the second question is, do you get the guarantee at any point that all registries will yield the same image digest for the same content? And can I, as a tooling author, rely on the fact that the same image will have the same digest across registries that are- same is, The same image is defined as as far as Reg is concerned about having the same hash. I mean, it's a content addressable store. If you push the same content to it, it's the same. I mean, it's you've just got to be very careful that if you push something between registries, you push the same content, um, which the tooling is, the new tooling is designed to let you do. Yeah, they've been tripping over the old tooling. Yeah, we I, all tripped over the old tooling because while a bunch of people are working in the, the new tool. tooling, the new tooling is not in the mass markets. Like most people aren't using this new tooling because we haven't declared anything of V1 or VN. <laughs> so we got to get that to the point. And then you guys will, you as Docker will probably merge that into your client tooling and everything. But I think we, we sometimes forget yeah, I mean, what everybody's actually using. Have we heard anything where not, we're signing more than just the descriptor of the entire thing is the right thing to do? You're talking about pending the whole index? Or I'm just asking, is there any other thing that we would? Want to sign? No? I think the descriptor is pretty complete that way. So, um, I totally missed the fact that content actually changes depending on the descriptor requested. So, um, when you push the artifact, you could push it with. Today, today if you push it as a Docker v2, the up conversion will, or the down conversion will be the problem at that point. So, the descriptor will prevent that kind of an issue. So, the manifest changes depending on what you request to the registry. Uh, and if you sign the descriptor, it is pretty complete from that way. It doesn't, okay. you can first assume that. And signing the descriptor doesn't s spoil portability in any fashion. No. Nothing in that descriptor that goes up. It makes sense. It's a manifest plus some metadata. Right. There's nothing that says, oh, that's from Docker versus no. ACR. So, yeah. I mean, we, what you were saying about the manifest changing based on what you request. So what happens is that we actually, so when when, when an image is pushed, yeah. we save the original content digest of what is pushed. Then depending on the client, you get different digests because you can have an OCI index or you can have a Docker v2 index. Uh, sorry, you can have an OCI uh, manifest or a v2 manifest being pulled. And the digest will be depending on the acts of content header. You're, you're doing you're doing conversion. Yeah, and yeah. that's what the registry spec does actually. So unless you can tell the registry, give me the exact content that was pushed plus the plus the content type, <coughs> and there's no API for that. But if you sign the descriptor, then you can guarantee that uh, it has both the source manifest type plus the act, the original manifest itself. Because you'd be using the media type in the descriptor when exactly. you request the content. Yeah. Okay. And can we also, in the sense of getting everybody to the, whatever the V1 is, uh, can, we, can we also assume that this is going to be in the OCI stuff and we wouldn't be down level into the older Docker manifest 
wants? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so this will also we're be... Not, yeah, I we're, always try to use the carrot to get people to switch, and I, I'd be nervous to, to no. make it... Like, if we're going to put this in down level, then why would anybody ever move to OCI, you know, and we get a consistent format across this? So, in fact, we should probably capture this. Sorry. I have a webinar that I'm supposed to be recording, I was and I'm like, about playing video oh, games over there. I can't record the webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just we should capture that we want to whatever these changes. It's assumed to be in the OCI uh, 1.0 distribution spec or 1x. What if we make any as changes to down our... level the Docker manifest? Like 99.9% .9 of the content we all have in our registries is the older Docker manifest formats. Right. And that 1% is because of us messing with stuff. Um, we want to get everything moved to the, the new OCI spec on everything, and by putting these capabilities only in the OCI. Oh, are we going to make this a forcing function, basically? Uh, it's a carrot. I'm, I'm actually suggesting it's a carrot, okay. and like this is where things are. Hey, it's easy to. We finally have enough value to make the change. There's really only a, a handful of projects that actually need to change, um, and the whole ecosystem just gets benefit because they'll upgrade to the latest version of Docker, they'll upgrade to the latest version of, you know, Kubernetes, and Magically, everything just falls in place. Okay. Do we have issues yes. with the statement? Yes, no? We kind of do, because if you're saying that the descriptor is the one that's going to be signed, then the parent index will always be an OCI index, right? Which means that clients need to request with the OCI index type. And none of the Docker tooling today, by default, requests the OCI index type. Well, that's my point. What yeah, I mean, but we've. Got some, mm -hmm. They got some time to mm -hmm. fix that. Okay. I think um, Eric McGowan and others are just waiting for a good enough reason to okay. switch over to a solid spec. And we're not at a solid spec yet. This will be the carrot to get. But from the other side, this is an adoption blocker for signing until whatever environment has that support moves to said support. I mean, but there's, there's, but there's other adoption blockers like us actually implementing the signing support as well. So <laughs> I think that, that, that I'm not sure that we would, anyone, well, not I'm not sure that anyone who's going to implement it is going to implement it for some platform that doesn't support yeah. the new thing. So I, I'm not sure it's technically going to be a not for us though, for a custom for a customer. If let's say we we all supported the spec support to say, does the customer now have to do additional work to get signing? There'll be well, some minor work. Like they're gonna have to upgrade to the latest assuming we get because we don't they got, own the AKS and you know they're sorry, K environment, right? Well there'll be some offshoot of this that'll make the changes in Kubernetes <coughs> and they're dependent on the latest version of whatever container D that subset group works on. And in order to enable this capability in Kubernetes, there will be some set of bits that are a minimal dependency. Um, for the masses of developers, that's where the other, you know, where Docker comes in and their latest version of Docker for desktop will have this switch at some point. And it will be a great value for people to upgrade to that and will be in a consistent state. So the min bar of OCI needs to be? The min bar of this, I think what I'm just saying is this notary v2 effort is going to have will be based on an, a certain level of the OCI spec. We won't go down level Docker manifest, whatever we're referring to them as. And yes, but what is that specific OCI? Is it, 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 the OCI it? V1 distribution spec. Yeah. Yeah. It might wind up being about 1-1. We'll see how far, we can, how far and fast we can get this done and how far and fast Vincent pushes on getting V1 done to them. <coughs> so we, we did have some other content. Um, we did have some stuff around uh, um, CNAP. Well, there was CNAP, but there was also a question around Providence and some other stuff. So, my only nervousness is there's so much built on top of this naming thing that can we close on that? Do we think we need more time? Do we need others? What can we do to start building? the first floor and have the basement done? Well, I think we've identified we all want to move. That's lovely. Portability is a thing. We've identified that this whole we, finding the descriptor is a complete thing, right? Mm -hmm. We figured that one out. Um, did we ever settle on, I hate to say, what is it, client side versus server side, or cloud signing versus that? Is, that, that that's transparent to this, right? 
The way you sign things is it is not really part no, of the model. Right. Yeah. Okay. In notary v1, was there some other thing we wanted to make sure we didn't do or we changed that we haven't already said very conclusively? This is like a we like this. So I remember you talking about starting a collection. So that yeah, is part of the two parts here. One is the fact that we do not require a separate notary endpoint for uh, the signature information. It should come from the original image itself. Yes, so it's come from the registry. Yeah. And so that way the registry becomes the way that people can get the signature as well, the same model. So, whether, so the registry is based, could be a proxy to whatever, yes. the team, tech, whatever, exactly. I don't care. It doesn't so matter. But today, one of the, uh, the original points is you shouldn't have to stand up a separate notary server mm -hmm. yeah. to get the environment running. It should just be part of the distribution spec. And, and Vincent's been working on this capabilities feature flaggy thing so that if you guys chose not to, I know you guys want to rush ahead and do it, and <laughs> whatever, that's not the way to work. But let's just say some other team, you know, cloud.com, doesn't want to support this. They could still be OCI 1.0 compliant, but they wouldn't have this feature flag that we would both turn on that says, hey, yeah, we support notary. So there's a way, this is kind of coming up with a way to define opt-in capabilities. You can work with them on this other. No, not really. But I'm wondering if that just gets into, if we define a signature as like a, a kind of artifact, if that just gets into artifact support in the registry. I think, I mean, Derek had some opinions about performance with this stuff, okay. um, which I should get him back into these meetings now, if we're mm. going to get onto those things. But he was very concerned that adding another layer of indirection was not great. And um, so he was quite keen on um, trying to trying to avoid that if possible, and basically having um, well, when, when we were discussing just name resolution being signed, just having the signature checking for the name resolution potentially, or just retrieving the signatures uh, integrated into the uh, name resolution process in the registry. Um, so if I, put, if I have the flag enabled on the client when it's actually doing the pull, the signature flow is part of it? Well, maybe not actually. I don't think that you'd expect the registry to check the signature for you, but you would expect it to retrieve it. Yeah, and, and deliver it. Down. Deliver yeah, it. And more it would check it there at the same time so that you could then you could then validate without having to have an extra round trip to fetch the signature as a separate artifact and then right. so you didn't add an extra round trip flow into it. And, and various customers have different signing tech for different stages of the pipelines too, right? Same image and stage get signed differently from the same image and prod which has to go to some other key some management customers tech. Do that. Yeah. They will that was part of the multiple key <coughs> areas. Right. I want things that are signed by Microsoft. And signed by me, Oracle. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. By uh, me being Coke. No, but yeah, so you might want to retrieve all the signatures at the same time, for example, rather than having to do a separate round for each signature, yeah. uh, or okay. have a signature manifest list type thing with them and retrieve them. But I mean, yeah. so basically, uh, so yeah, Derek was quite keen on optimizing the actual in registry flow for that purpose, um, which I think is kind of reasonable. But just to bubble uh, back up, that is a, a kind of a, it's it's great the optimization detail design that change some of the conversations we're having. It now. doesn't change the design <coughs> at all. Right. Conceptually, it's still the same as if it was an independent signature, just sitting. Right. It's just a question of the API for retrieving it. So, okay. do we think? So I, it, we, again, we can go either way. Either. The name is part of it, the name is not part of it. Can we decide now or do we need to defer? I just would like us to start moving on to another topic and either we have to move on to another topic and table this or do we think we can close on how we want to suggest the naming goes? Well, there was CNAP from, that came on. Well, the that's what I'm saying. I would question. like to get on to another okay. topic. That's why I'm asking, can and we close this one out? And, and from last week, were there any open items that we wanted to make sure we do mm -hmm. this? That's it. <laughs> there was nothing from the scenarios. Uh, there was some feedback on the scenarios and so forth, but I, I think, honestly, I think a lot of the stuff was captured in the scenarios. Um, uh, Justin Capo added, added a bunch that I want to, I was talking to him offline about how to merge that content in. 
Yeah, the, thre the threat model. The threat, mo yeah, the threat model. I, I he had threat model, and he had some great scenarios that uh, at least Sam and I were giving him some feedback on not making him 7.1.3, but literally there was like a 7, 8, and 9. There were some great top-level scenarios. Yeah, I mean, if we could try and merge those for review next week, given that Justin's not, not, none of that team's here this week, it'd be great if we could get them, yeah. those things merged in so we can discuss them next week. Okay. Um, I can take care of that. Uh, I, I, was, yeah. I was letting him, I, I was thinking he wanted a version, so he, it comes with his name and everything, and he was suggesting, like, don't worry about it. There's either some GitHub feature, which I don't think will work on the path we're taking, or I'll just merge it and there's plenty okay, of So there's some things. feedback on scenarios that has to get merged. Yep. So the next week we can actually discuss it as a group. Perfect. So, okay, we don't have to do that right this minute. No. Perfect. Um, I think we need to write this down in terms of a, in the notes. Well, I mean, just as a description of what the implications yeah. of this are, what the what it implies for the UX, what it implies for everything. So I think <coughs> this is in effect a way to sign moves and not have the signature be invalidated. Is, this is a mechanism. This is a mechanism to have signatures that have some sort of claim about the content of the image and allow the image to be, to be moved, moved correct. without invalidating the signature. Right. Yeah. While, while the tag can change. Yeah. I think the, big, the biggest thing I've seen between these two is if we want to be able to change the tag and the artifact name, the repo and tag, um, and have, if we want to be able to change these two elements, we need another way to have a way to specify what this name was. If we think that the tag, the repo and tag, can be locked as part of the signature, do we still think we need the other thing as long as we have the the key that says it came from? I'm, I'm getting confused. Yeah, sorry, what are you? Yeah, because <laughs> you're, you're specifying the fully qualified name. No, so I'm, not, I'm never specifying the fully qualified name. I'm so only saying the repo and tag, the last two elements. No. No. no that thing that, that, that means the fully qualified name. That just Which, in, is a fully, is, it was a short form for a fully qualified name, which yeah, is perhaps slightly misleading. I thought that was the whole point is we were not no, 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 no. signing fully qualified names. No, yeah, we're signing a fully qualified We're signing com .docker Justin. Yes, that is the uh, uh, default mechanism of discovery for Docker, but for all other registries, we will specify the fully qualified Well, we, we might have rules for different registries as well or something. I mean, that's but, but fundamentally, you're signing a fully qualified name. But we're not putting it into the poll tag. The, the poll it, it may or may not be the same. We might it's an option. It's, we might have some way of deducing it. We might, but yeah, that's why we should write this down for the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah if we're close to the metal on anything, yeah. it's huh? close. I think we're closest here. We should tie it off. Although I thought the proposal, of the, the the discovery of the feature, <coughs> um, the tag non <coughs> we thought was suitable for giving it its birth name, right, or its birthplace. The thing that we cared about most into perpetuity is the birthplace of this well, container. Some, off, I think often, right? often I think we can use the birthplace as that, but not always. So the example was MCR, which is definitely not the, it doesn't birth things, so it can't, but, but it's the source of things. And there are probably, other cases, like for, if you're going to have a flat namespace across Amazon registries, then you probably want the flat name to be the default, not the specific um, region that you pushed it to. For example, if you're going to move from having a, so it's just a generic well, name, not a region. You go when you need. I thought there was some. Well, there, there is, but but the so globally. Well, globally, it, it's a it's com dot docker dot or whatever. But there are you might want a UX for defaulting it to be that's sane, so you don't always have to type it if it's like if it's a common case or a config for setting a, a set of matching rules if your organization has particular rules just to simplify your life. And, and we may want to find that in. Not necessarily in the runtime, but in like an orchestrator or a higher level tool that builds on top of the runtime as well. Yeah. 
And we may just, I mean, we may want to have, yeah, <coughs> a library that you can use that does this resolution, for example, that you can stick everywhere and yeah. it's consistent between everywhere. But let's write up, yeah, let's write this down so that everyone's. Yeah, I'm writing the image down. I'll say no Ruby 2 will support this. And then we can go figure out how. Okay. Which will change. Did this necessarily also, I didn't catch the part that it also addressed the tagging element too. Right, so in your in your response right now, you conjoined tagging. I wasn't. Yeah, what what are you feeling to me on that it was a tagging? This this was inclusive of tagging or not yet? Where are you? Like you seem more opinionated than I've been. I've been easily swayed either way on the the repo tag being changeable. Where are you? Yeah, this is now? just a name you sign. Doesn't yeah. imply anything no, I know, but about. What is, like the the problem that we face as registry operators is customers are always asking us for tag locking. Every registrator, every registry implements it slightly differently. I and don't, customers I wind up. That's not a signing project. issue. Not a signing. It's just not things a signing issue. It's an overlying about. scenario. I don't, you are. I don't think so. I think that what Justin's trying to say is that there is a name, and that is the name that is signed, and that is distinct from the location, including the tag, which I agree with. And, okay with that. And how does it if really, he wanted, you were he had specifically wanted you were asking, we get some asking if you're not as passionate about it anymore, it's not an issue anymore. You were very specific. You wanted to be able to in the poll command say Ubuntu 1804. Now so you have to because there there might be an image that is called multiple things. So take Windows, for example. You have a Windows container image and you have one that's called latest, or maybe you've gotten rid of it at this point, yeah. but you have you have one that is so there a, is an 1804. You have, you have an 1804, right? And then you might have a build revision of that. Yeah. And they're actually the same image. Yes. And customers can reference it either way. Correct. And the signature has to be valid for both. And the signature would be valid. And it has to be the same signature. Uh, yes. It, same at the, when well, they are the same, they would be the same. But yep. when a new build comes out, the stable tag will be have the same right. signature as the new one. What, so the tag needs to not be the same thing as the signed content. What's the value of a tag if it's referencing exactly the same stuff? Human readable. Amongst many other things. We, like, we do well, this for like the Amazon Linux container images, right? So we have an Amazon Linux latest, we have Amazon Linux 2, and those are currently the same thing. Then there's also a revision of Amazon Linux 2 that is a specific point release of that. And those, those are all the same thing. And at some point, the latest and the two images move forward, but the point release stays the same. So you can pin yourself to an older release of the same uh, thing if uh, you want, but you also have the flexibility to say, just keep me sort of on the current thing whenever uh, I'm ready. Whichever granularity you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the part that I'm, um, I'm, I'm mapping myself, my okay, so to, to the current. I could. Map it to the current. Okay, but so we haven't supported that in this case. Yeah, so multi naming mm. is the problem. So we haven't supported multi naming because this way we put that, the assumption was we put that name that we created inside the, I mean, I think inside the image and not inside the signature. I think you well, can the thing changed. support multi naming <laughs> by, like, well, I, I'm suddenly going to do it this way and then. I don't know, I changed the name. You have to change something like that. Sure. And then it computes that. Sorry, so, what have you done? Or re the whole thing. Why shouldn't you re sign the whole <coughs> thing? You should re -sign. Because it fundamentally mean different things to you, right? They leave the Amazon Linux use case, right? Well, or what's the drawback to re signing? Well, you. Question. Five questions. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to take one at a time. Um, <laughs> no. I'll buy, I'll buy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're right in the example that I had, it was sort of confusing because I was using the same thing for both. So what you could do is you could just have a name there that's different and then when you're pulling, you just specify the thing that you care about. Notice that this tag hasn't changed, right? Ah, this is the same one, or I could change. So, you, okay, sorry, sorry. So you, you were saying, so you always specify the name you want to check you, you as the, the, mo you want to check the most specific thing. Yes. Um, but that means that if you want to upgrade from version 3.2.1 to 3.2.2, you have to change that. You could also, 
and I don't know if this is the right thing, maybe you could have it validate a prefix as the thing that you're expecting here, or you could go farther and say, I want to take in like a regular expression and anything that satisfies that regular expression, I want to use it to validate. So the, the thing that's in the image is going to be the most specific name, but what you're trying to validate against when you pull, you might be able to define you need to write that. an expression that means whatever you meant that to be. Uh, I'm expecting to be here. Whenever. This is because we're building the name into the image. Yeah. But yeah. if you put yeah. it into the signing metadata as a claim, then you can have multiple claims. Yeah, which goes back to being more like the, the Git signing model where you yeah. can sign tags and the and the and the name of the tag is is part of I actually what you sign. I'd always thought that was the model, but now I realize the disconnect because unless you move the the name into the sign the signature information, you you get you get bundled in with one name as an option. But you can have a set of aliases or for each tag if needed. If you want to solve the multi name or you have a signature per tag, which is the other way around. So one tag would only have one. Good. Both models are they have their pros and cons. I don't have an opinion on that. Ooh, look at that animated kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's got the little tails to it. It's, I, I'm not sure if that's a resolution thing. It's kind of hypnotic. I'm seeing the image. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I noticed you had scrolled off the top, but it was. Uh, it kind of helps visualize the. Anyway, I think we can come back. This is not a like solution, right? This is a discussion point. Yeah. So. But the idea is um, to use the canonical name of some sort that's already in the OCS spec, whatever is existing, to define the image and sign against that so the location can move if what you sign points to that kind of thing. Is yeah. that basically what that is? Okay. I'm sorry. And then to, with respect to tagging, I could tag it and it'd be different and it won't matter. Like I could tag it prod, my prod, my favorite, my least favorite. And it all maps to the canonical name. Signatures are the same. Yes. Okay. So, so if, naming. If you want to support multiple tagging on a signature, uh, that leads back to this discussion of whether the signature should know what are the possible set of canonical names that it can be referenced as. For example, Bionic or Ubuntu 1604, kind of the same, but uh, you need to be able to know which one is it. So does does it mean that the signature will have multiple canonical names in it? Is probably an open question at this point. Yeah, that's what I'm understanding. I think my my inclination is the signature would have one canonical name. Okay. And your validation logic for validating the signature should account for whatever you think are okay. the valid set of names. Right. So if I accept, if I accept, you can saw any version of Ubuntu, wow. mm -hmm. then I know that it's the the canonical name is going to be Ubuntu and the, the details after it might be. So there is a convention that the canonical name varies only from one set, otherwise people are on one side or something like that. I don't, I don't, from no, US, I don't think there's necessarily a convention. I think that I'm just saying that it's up to the validator to decide which names it considers valid for okay. an image. Okay. I, I understand it's an open question. On this. Well, no, from a signing perspective, from a crypto perspective, what does a customer want to do? They want to sign it doesn't preclude that, right? A customer can actually say, I'm going to sign that canonical name with that version and tag, and that's all that ever. This key is only going to trust that, period. You use this key, and you go off and try and verify a different version or with a different tag, we should be able to say that's not allowed. And that's a security policy that customers will want to have. Thank you. Right? I think that might be going a little bit too far on what the key itself would do. Um, the key essentially ties to um, a signer, right? Um, and what the signer is signing with it really depends on what what claims they decide to put in. Right. Um, they can decide to put in canonical names or decide not to put in canonical names. Um, so does notary v2 have to start specifying the types of claims people can put in? If we go with something like you can put in any one of the OCI annotations, you could pick any set of those annotations, right? Like it really depends on uh, what the signer chooses to find. So are the claims that are being signed the set of OCI annotations is whatever OCI specifies can go into the entire description? 
no that spec. literally the claim? There's the no spec claim. at this point. Yeah, I mean the question, so originally when we were talking, we were thinking we could sign the manifest, which would have ACI annotations in, but if we want to move that to the um, so what the signature and what you're actually signing, then it's up to us to make a spec for that, and we could uh, just use OCI annotations, or we could put our own namespace in. One of the suggestions that I had in the, the pull request that was like the different ways that we could structure things was um, you could specify basically everything as an entry, as a descriptor in the list of manifests in the index. And so you could have a descriptor that points to a signature and then also points to the components that made up, that were like inputs into calculating the signature, one of which could be the manifest and another one could have been a claim that is uh, made on the manifest. Mm. So you could have like a couple levels in direction pointing there. Does that make any sense? No, it didn't. Can you say it again? I just want to give them the, the tree view of that. Yeah, that's probably easiest. Yeah, yeah, let's copy. We have an index, and in the index is a list of manifests. It's just the name of the list, and each of the things in here is a descriptor. Today, all of the descriptors point to manifests. And they're, they have a, a content type, a media type that uh, maps to that manifest, and then it points over into some other object, right, which is the manifest object over there. So another way that you could do this, you could have um, a signature on here. This is its own descriptor and points into its own object or its own just like content of byte that is the signature. And you could say this signature as its input included this descriptor and included like a claim. So when you're calculating a signature, you could like append the uh, descriptor for the, the manifest and the descriptor for the claim together, and then you have a signature of both of them. And when you're validating it, you know that you want to validate the signature over both of these things. Does that make more sense than? Okay. What do you find a claim? I don't claim, I mean. Right now, arbitrary bytes. So I don't know if we could define what that is. We, we could just go with the standard claim schema, which has a specification already. You don't have to invent it. Where's the claim? It's the JSON claim schema. Okay. What do you use it for? What are claims? Jots and things like that. It's, I, I think it's pretty commonly yeah. used. But that's, that's just about how the claims need to be. It's just key value pair in some form. That's the rough thing. But uh, the other thing is um, another, like a, a minor possibility in this is that the index can technically just be two, which two manifests, which is one is the descriptor of the original image, and the second one is the signature if needed. And the signature, because right now my understanding is that the registry cannot point to random layers in the manifest, it has to be a manifest itself. It has to be a manifest list. Cannot be a layer in it. I might be. I Say might be wrong. So in the in the original proposal, the signature can point to a random blob, but a manifest list can only point to manifest. Right. right. So there's, there's a little bit of value. Well, we have been discussing that. a config object yeah. in index as no, well, which yeah. in theory could. Yeah. That, that's a separate thing, right? Yeah. So instead, if even if we did the signature, and it was a manifest of a signature artifact type with an extensible model of any content you want to put. It can have canonical names. It can have a mm -hmm. uh, separate set of claims uh, in the config object in the signature. Then it's possibly, I mean, that's also one model where you don't have to kind of like explore the original manifest also. You just have. And as a client, they can fall through here. And I see the descriptor. I don't have signature validation capability. Just go and pull the image itself. But if I have signature validation capability, then I go and pull the signature out and then do the client cell validation. Mm -hmm. That is an indirection model. And then they can enforce that I would only pull this image if it passes the signature validation site. And that, is that consistent with what you're thinking, Derek, was your 
per conversation? Is this a slower uh, than? It's okay. Than slower. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that, that, that that's, that's, just a, that's just a bad optimization. I don't know. <clears throat> All right. Wait. Where are we at? I was I was cheating and reading ahead on the CNAP thing, but um, where are we at? Um, did, did we capture? Well, I hope we I wrote that. Right. I wrote <laughs> down what. It, that's and, that's um, also roughly within the four requests that I had open. That's fair. Yeah, I wasn't as worried about that because honestly, that was. I think that that's why I'm trying to get a couple of these other things figured out because I think the conversations and decisions around which one of those we choose falls out of the previous conversation of what we're naming and what we're annotating. Do we agree that the tag is pointing to the index at this point? We didn't get that far. I don't know I don't know if there's another option, but we didn't get that we didn't explicitly say that yet. Okay. Because I think that that really does get into the deeper conversation what Sam was capturing from all the various people around um, where is the signature, how do you refer to it? Because we can't we change the manifest with the signature that we're signing, you know, the chicken egg thing. Um, we do need to put things in an index, so it, it logically makes sense. Is your concern there for clients that don't know how to read image indices? Um, no, it's more kind of like leading towards tag immutability. So the point is that if you try to push an image with, uh, let's say, my app v1, yeah. then you try to sign it, you, you potentially want the signed you want to, that tag to point to the signed digest. So immutable tags won't kind of work there. But if the client makes it possible that I can push the digest, and then I can finally push the tag as a signed tag, then it's fine. So it's more about the clients that need to enable that thing. Because tag immutability just breaks when if you try to push it and then you try to re-sign it. Yeah, I mean, it's also not a spec feature, though. So. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I want to kind of like, it's, it's just easing off the, the details. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one thing is we've got to do some homework before the next uh, yeah. Monday meeting once the scenarios emerge and so we understand it so we can comment on that, lock that in. I think we've kind of agreed on a few things. Do we want to shift to the CNABI's um, thing that was sent in? There's one thing that I guess we've kind of implied that, which is a difference from TAF, because actually some of this isn't that different from TAF yet. It's about uh, we don't think we've got any kind of use case for snapshot files. I collections of stuff at the same time. What's the use case of collection so of stuff? Well, how do you start the collection? You start the, the whole way for sure you aren't getting all the tags. So if for now if you change the tag, you have to start the collection again. Right. Oh, this is allowing tags to move? This is allowing the tag to change. Yeah, tough wouldn't allow that. Because Tuff makes those signature over the collection of things that are in there, you'd have to regenerate the signature every time you change it. Right. And uh, that's sorry, uh, could you clarify? Sorry, I, I don't fully get this. It was Trishank. Yeah. The so for Notary V1, uh, every time a collection of uh, images change, <coughs> you have to resize the, um, uh, the no. snapshot, the, the go. The, what that called the uh, collection um, of all the images. Yep. So, we, so we haven't specified anything like that, uh, like that in Notion Review 2 yet. Oh, but, okay. I think I see. There's ways to automate it. Most of the time, you can push signing the timestamp and snapshot, like Docker or the registry can do it transparent for you for all of the images. Um, instead of the way we're doing today, which is a different timestamp snapshot for every image. I don't know if this helps. I think the question for me is, I don't know if I understand the use case for those snapshot files in the context of um, what a, like how people use container registries for images. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Yeah, it's designed actually originally for dependencies between packages. Like, let's say on Debian, right? If you're installing yeah. a package, you're usually so putting in dependencies. We don't have dependencies. Images. Between, Sorry? We don't have dependencies in, a, in, in any useful sense like that. Yeah. Yeah, I see. That's interesting. I don't know whether there's <laughs> other artifacts in there that might oh. want to list dependencies, but that's a whole different topic, I guess. 
So, so basically, this is the the prop. I mean, the issue with collections was we discussed a permission model for this one. I list a set of images and I get a certain set of digests. That digest set should never change. That was the whole idea of permission sets, right? You have immutable collections in some form. Snapshot guarantees that that collection has not been changed. I would like to hear a use case for that first. Mm -hmm. I don't see a scenario for that. It's it's a it's a it's a valid topic. You mean in the container? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. It, it is valid from a security standpoint, but I don't see a customer wanting to use that yet. If you did registry replication, then I want to move an entire repository, which means I saw the snapshots and these are the digests and these are the signatures and I move everything over. That is a valid use case. But are we targeting that? If so, where does collection snapshots even apply is something that I'm not well, following. Well, Justin's point is this is explicitly not yes, targeting this is, that. This is yeah, per right. image. Everything and are we cool image. with that? And as of now, both Sam and you are saying, I can't see a reason why we are yeah. not cool, aka we seem to be cool with that. Yeah, I, the, the way that people use registries is typically that like each, in, each image in the registry is basically independent. And Often people don't ever delete anything from a registry, yeah. so it's just a ever accumulating thing of everything you've ever built potentially. Um, and so there is there's no sense in which they're used together at all. So who would provide a counterpoint to the statement? I don't know. Trishank? I think this is something that I don't think that we can decide in the next forty minutes. This is something I that we should know. Yeah. No, no, I, I, no. Just, I wanted to raise it because it came up implicitly earlier. I wanted to make it explicit that, um, yeah, that, we've, that we haven't come up with a use case for collections and we've come up with some models that make them potentially harder to implement. Is there any yeah, I see what you're saying. It's a, it's a valid concern. I think we should write this down. Um, and think about it. Um, yeah, it's definitely just, something to think about. As a quick note, I just took a look at the other things that are included in Snapshot. And I think the only thing that isn't just a list of all the files is including the version numbers of each of the files to make sure that, you know, to prevent like a rollback attack or something like that. That would be my only concern with getting rid of it entirely. But yeah, there's that. Yeah, and I just realized there's another thing we did design for Docker. Um, Justin mentioned a registry for China. So one of the things we designed, especially for Docker, was a way to allow hosting images in, let's say, another country. And you may want to trust some signing keys to them, but not everything necessarily. And so having the snapshot actually buys you security. They cannot switch the images. But we can talk about this. That's probably the highest security use case I can think of right now. I can I can add that to the document. So I just wrote a note saying diverging from tough, and we can put in things in there because you want somebody scanning these notes to go. Oh oh oh! I want to read that part. I would add a piece of the the possible mirroring scenario. Yeah. Such as Docker Hub in China. Just as a nothing more than a tickler for our memories. Is that is that accurate? I mean, yeah, that, that potentially could be. I mean, um, cases where it does matter from that. That could be one. Of, that could be the argument. It could be the case that you don't want someone to mirror it into a another country, but without these images. Um, but that's not doesn't. But, but because of the way we tend to refer to container images, we already know what image names are there, and we don't have any support for really doing SEMVAR or upgrades other than doing that. I'm not sure it, it, that it really fits with a real threat model, I would say, but I think we, we, we need to look at it and see what. From a threat model perspective, mirroring should do its own set of threat models, right? Like the collection itself, the set of vulnerabilities and images that go. I don't see tough as solving Mirroring is a use case by itself because there's more to it than just the signatures. The entire collection is a timestamp and things like that. But if well, it's it's has a set of use cases around mirroring and a set of does. properties around mirroring and a set of 
none of which are supported by Nature V1 okay. because mirroring wasn't really a thing, but they do exist in the. There's a, there's a whole <coughs> section on um, mirroring config in the task spec. Okay, so so then I'm wrong. So you've explicitly called that out. Good. So it's explicitly in the notes, and there yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, do we want to do a read of the CNAP uh, doc that was also on the agenda, so we don't forget that? Yep. Just capturing. Can so I wrote to take on for the to dos uh, to catch up on the scenarios, including uh, Justin Capitalist. Can you take on writing up the naming conversation? Like what the options are and what what are the next steps? Yeah. Okay. And I put whatever you just drawn up it's in the notes already. Okay. Okay. All right. So we are taking ten minutes and reading the CNAB doc that was listed up in the beginning of today's meeting notes. The the notary V2 and CNAB. I feel like I'm in AWS school. Why? Why is that? Because we're reading it. Reading. Okay. I'm not stuck in the PowerPoint presentation. We've, 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 had, we've had so many examiners and people, it's becoming second nature. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Quiet, read. Yeah, Radu, would you, would you like to uh, kick this off, introducing this? Yeah, sure. No, uh, we're going to read it. We're actually reading. Yeah, I was saying we're explicitly not doing the Microsoft PowerPoint conversation. We're going to read first and then discuss. Oh, okay. well, 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 you'll you'll get your opportunity. Let's just read and catch up. <clears throat> okay, so should we come back in ten minutes or so? Sorry, what was that? Uh, are we reconvening in five ten minutes or? Yes, we are reading the CNAB uh, notary v two doc that was shared earlier. We just just give us ten minutes to read that. Okay, so so I guess we'll be back in ten minutes. It's Does like yeah, a 10 minute break sound like a good idea for everyone? Yeah. Yeah, but over here we're doing the reading, so no break. All right, sounds us. good. Thanks, guys. Okay.
Sorry, I was introducing Aaron to our, uh, we've got a couple of partner BD guys, mm. oddly. So our org has partner BD under the partner group, mm -hmm. we have partner BD under the service team group. <laughs> so it actually gives us the ability to reach out to one or the other. And I think it'll be valuable for Aaron and me because SATTAC and another person we work with, they do a lot of our partner reach out, mm. which is really great. Right? Yeah. Because when we're shipping a feature, 90%, well, not 90%, but a good number of times, our customers are absorbing that feature through a partner's higher level service. Right. That's <laughs> uh, super interesting. Sajay, right? did you want an OCI sticker? Cool. Oh, no. <gasps> <gasps> I, I think I should. I mean, You've been working on this for so long. What, the figures? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> most likely that too, right? I feel like the only sticker I should have on my laptop right now is ECR, but I should also have an OCI sticker because that just... Do you have ECR stickers? Huh? Do you have ECR stickers? Yeah, and guess what? At the last KubeCon, they were the first ones to run out. And I reinvented the first ones to run out because most people don't get them. And then they're like, wait, what's that weird-looking thing that I haven't seen before that <laughs> my laptop needs? I don't know what it means, but I'll take it. Okay. We do. See, I have the, I have that one, Sam. See. I have the mm -hmm. All right, see Navi stuff. This is the dog. All right, we're waiting for, uh, for those on the bridge, we're waiting for Steve and Aaron to wander back in the room and then we'll get started on this. Okay, sounds good. How long are you here, Justin? Are you leaving tonight? No, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm around tomorrow in Redmond. The other side of the lake, like yeah, the other side of the lake, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, both Bob and Deepak wandered in. They're like, wait, that's some of the people are familiar. Like, We have everybody in the room, so the CNAB. Uh, who was wanting to give a five minute quick on this stuff? The great Radu. Radu. Floor is yours, Radu. Thanks a lot. So, uh, for the purpose of this conversation, you can think of at CNAB as simply a package format to distribute uh, applications built from multiple components, right? So specifically, it's a, it's a metadata file together with a list of OCI artifacts, right? Uh, the uh, bundle definition, which is the metadata part, describes parameters, credentials, other types of metadata about the application, uh, together with a list of OCI artifacts that are needed to the application. And because um, we have a list of artifacts, uh, we represent a bundle in an OCI uh, registry right now as an OCI index. So we, uh, we use, uh, for now, annotations to define the fact that our index is representing, in fact, a CNAP bundle and, the list, and uh, represent the list of uh, artifacts as individual manifests in the manifest list portion of the index. So that's how we're distributing uh, bundles using OCI uh, artifacts. 
effects. Uh, and because we're using uh, the same model as, as we're distributing container images, we reuse most of the Docker content trust model for uh, artifact signing. So uh, if you scroll down a bit, yeah, we're using uh, Notary v1 right now. Uh, very, as I said, very closely related to the Docker content trust model uh, to sign individual bundles. Uh, and we actually sign the content digest of the bundle metadata file. And we distribute that to Notary and then push uh, the actual artifacts to uh, container registries and construct the OCI uh, index that represents the entire bundle. Um, now, that is one way of representing a CNAP bundle artifact. The other way is as uh, what we call a thick bundle, which is an OCI layout um, export of all artifacts together with, again, some metadata files. So this, uh, this is where we get, we get in the actual requirements that people have asked from, from our project, which is, first of, first of all, we want to uh, distribute bundles and artifacts in air-gapped environments, and we want to persist signatures. And um, a signature has to continue to be valid even after it's been uh, moved into an air-gapped environment. And specifically, it has to be valid in, uh, in the case when the customer does not have access to the original registry where the signature was pushed. And this is the bit where uh, we don't really have a way to satisfy right now. So as long, as long as you have access to the original notary trust server where the signature was pushed, you can validate the signature. But if you don't want to use that, you cannot really validate the original signature and you have to resign after you've crossed the trust, the trust boundary. Any questions, comments so far? I, I have some questions. So as a spec, CNAB is not a CNCF thing. It's just an, it's a spec that groups got together and said, here we go. That's a Linux Foundation project under JDF. Sorry? That's a Linux Foundation project under JDF. OK. OK. So and ACR supports this. Well, they follow the artifacts model, so the fact that they can change uh, media types, so yes. It's, it's, I see. So because ACR supports because multiple ACR, media types, you can yeah. play with this. Exactly. And the CNAP bundle is a different media type in there. Uh, yes and no. They have one gap, which we've all identified, that the way artifacts represent uniqueness is the config media type. Config objects don't exist on index. We've all discussed we want to add it. Okay. Uh, we just haven't done it yet because we're trying to get the base one done, and then we'll come back and do uh, okay. the index as well. But there's general consensus it's a good thing. So that's why uh, Reddy was mentioning these annotations today. I see. Technically, any registry that supports OCI indexes can accept CNAP artifacts. OCI indexes. Index. You're, you're the one you have in flight. Yeah. yeah, but no, it doesn't need multiple media types, though. Or does it? No, it's just the index work. Okay. Right? Am I speaking right, Sam? I missed something. Do you guys don't support the work are you doing to support index? Yes. To support we manifest don't support list. Index yet. We, well, manifest list not index. yet. Correct. It's in progress. That, right. That's what we're I was trying to get to CNAB as a thing that this is something. So does Notary V2 have to make sure that we may, we hit these limitations, that we solve these limitations from Notary V1? I mean, and are we doing it because they're good things, or are we doing it just for the, CNAB? I, I think oh, no, high-level question. The, these limitations and the requirements are pretty generic. Yeah, these, these apply to everything. Exactly. We want yeah, to do, right? I mean, I think there's some. Right. I'd have some questions around the wording of some of them, but fundamentally, there's. Fundamentally, these are all issues that we basically... What questions do you have around the wording? Um, um, I think that there's some assumptions in the... If you scroll up to the requirements mm -hmm. in um, 4 and 5, there's assumptions about how keys map to registries that we have not made any... They're probably... The, Arguably, we've changed, we've already made 
we've potentially made different decisions about, such as being able to pay in the route of trust for a registry is not a requirement that we have actually agreed that we want to do at all um, as a thing. But we've talked about routes of trust for particular artifacts, pu publish or Publi yeah. publishers, or and potentially that registries might sign for some subset of their users. But I think in general, we're not we're not expecting that a registry per se is the root of trust object. Right, Udi, can you explain why that requirement is there? Like if, if a, a company could claim their root of trust and the registries are just temporary storage locations, is there a challenge there? Uh, that was uh, an issue that popped up in the community uh, from people who have um, different entities contributing bundles that they want to use. Just like the example you had earlier, right, with an Oracle, uh, an artifact contributed by Oracle and one by Docker, right? Where where do I get the initial bootstrapping for my uh, keys for my trust? And I think Tushan, do you have any uh, more background on that item? Oh yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, uh, what some people in the C9 community want to see is that, so for example, they need to be able to support the use case where you have a registry that holds all these bundles and they may wish to use, reuse basically a single root of trust, right? For the entire repo, which is not there with Notary V1 right now. It's a different, potentially different root of trust for every bundle repo. So one signing model we'd like to support to simplify key management for developers to say, okay, look, don't worry about the root, don't worry about the timestamp, don't worry about the snapshot. We, the registry have got it. All you got to do is to sign your bundle targets metadata, right? The hashes for your bundles, and it will take care of the rest. We'll distribute your public keys for you so that people know how to verify your bundles. So they also want to be able to use different registries containing different bundles, right? Let's say Oracle has its own uh, repository. Docker has its own repository. And you might have a completely private repository that's accessible only in your own network but you want to reuse the same mechanism to like somehow say, okay, look, I'm the end user. I want to be able to specify the root key for each one, for each bundle repo, a registry basically. And I also want to control exactly which, which registries I trust for which bundles. Does this roughly make sense to everyone? Well, it, it roughly makes sense, but it's just not a, it, it, it's a use case that we, more or less specifically decided that we were unlikely to want to support because registries are such large collections of miscellaneous stuff that a single root of trust for a registry doesn't make much sense for all the use, case, the use cases we discussed for at least for large scale registries. Potentially it might make sense for a, an organizational registry where you're running something just for your organization. Um, and this actually ties into a, to another discussion that has been raised here quite a bit, which is as an organization, I want to quote unquote bless some components that I put into my own registries whose signatures I want to preserve, whose original signatures I want to preserve, which ties into the first requirement, which is I want to persist a bundle signature, uh, an artifact signature, when moving from one registry to another, which I think I think if, if we if we provide that to end organizations, I think we can work around this sort of requirement. That I wouldn't focus on it all that much. Okay. Yeah, I think we're trying to like we definitely want to be able to support roots of trust that somebody can support. It's just it's tying it to a specific registry is the concern because we're actually trying to do the opposite. We're trying to make sure things can move. Now, it's not to say that somebody couldn't have a policy that their host only accepts from a, even a firewall rule uh, images that come from a particular DNS or even a particular registry. So there's other ways to approach it. We're just trying to say that the signature isn't, like a registry is a, just a temporary storage location. And, temporary storage location for? Uh, for anything. Like the fact that something's in this registry A versus registry B doesn't really matter. It's the thing is the thing, the artifact 
is signed by an entity, and that's what's really important. Where I happen to pull it from isn't really as, like from an actual registry pull isn't really important. No. Yeah, I should I should make it clear that we're not asking that this is like the required like default use case on on Notary V2. We're just saying it would be great if an organization could use Notary V2 and reuse uh, a single right. root, right, for for its own registry. I think what you're hearing us is there's a single root that's tied to a registry as opposed to the registry is the single root. Yeah, okay. like because if you do that, then you can't move the artifact to another repo, another registry. Um, and have the signature be maintained. Yeah, um, he, he's I just saying let's not explicitly block that. I guess that's what I'm trying to understand. Now, are you asking that you want you literally want the signature to be tied to a registry and path? No, no. I, I think there's a misunderstanding. What I'm trying to say is that I, I I agree with the requirement that the signature for an image or a bundle should be independent of registry. I agree. What I'm trying to talk about is the key distribution mechanism. You don't necessarily need to have a, a different uh, route of trust for all the. Um, it's 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 a it's a key management kind of thing. Mm. I guess I should do is a better job. Or we, we, we should, no, no, certainly, certainly we have a requirement that there isn't a um, separate key for each repo as Notary has now. That's that's a totally agreed thing. Um, Oh yeah, then when, I think I, we're on the same page. Well, we've also agreed that we are not going to have a, a single key for each um, registry as well because that's too restrictive. In the opposite, I mean, it's it's nice uh -huh. in that it means fewer keys, right. but it's not the uh -huh. way that that people that we that people use registries. So, tying the moving the key from being at the repo level to the registry level does indeed involve your keys, but it's also, we don't think, is the answer. I, I well, see what you're saying. Uh, Let me clarify following up on Steve's comment earlier, which is that this is a host level policy. I should have made that clear. There's not a server registry side thing. This is end users being able to say, well, if I wanted to do this, I should be able to do it. With the default assumption being that, you know, you have a single registry and a single root of trust, but if you wanted to customize on your side, you should be able to. And there are three, no, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no but, no, because we're not, I don't think we're going to, I, I don't think most registries are going to provide a single root of trust. That's what, I, I'm just not sure that it's realistic. When we say root of trust. That means a single root public key that you can chain every signature for every image in a registry from. So if I hack that one, I get the whole thing. Yeah, but the assumption is that you're going to keep this key very safe, right? That's not going to do the actual, um, what we call in tough delegation. So, so imagine a Docker IO had a single root of trust. So one alternative is to say, okay, Docker is like, well, I don't know. I'm not signing for Docker's, I mean, sorry, Oracle's images, but I will give you Oracle's keys. And if you oh. trust me, Docker, that's all you need to trust, <clears throat> Oracle's keys, oh. um, somebody else's keys, yeah. Does it make sense? We haven't gotten into key distribution yet. Yeah. Like it's just not a topic we've covered yet. Right. Well, we've kind of implicitly have every now and again, but yeah. Yeah, we've sort of just <laughs> a couple of times, but we haven't gotten into the details of it. And yeah, I think there's a lot of implications that we're going to have to work through and figure out how we feel about different approaches there. But yeah, you know, we don't know. Or Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's either I would much better discuss other items in this document. Right, right. I, yeah, this is not the biggest thing that we write. No, but, sorry, but that was basically what I was identifying as the thing that's not already in Skype. Right. Yeah, but there's a couple of things have we it? have in there. It's like, yeah, it's a copy and paste, you know, essentially yeah. a copy and paste from the same thing we have in another area. So we're just trying to identify the unique things if we're not well, covering yeah. something. Two things that I would uh, bring up in this conversation. First of all is, uh, uh, CNAB has a definition of provenance and, and attestation, and we plan on using mm -hmm. to use Intoto for that. <coughs> the custom top collection section to distribute top uh, to distribute Intoto uh, metadata. Uh, and what I'll ask uh, Tushank to chat through is how we actually use uh, delegation to, to define the Intoto root layout key. And if, if there's anything specific that we need to ask from uh, V2. Yeah. Um, so we we need Notary V2 to be able to support 
I think the technical capability is really there. It's not just directly exposed to the end user, to the developer, I mean, which I think is the only thing. But we need a way for Tuff to say, um, or Notary we do, I should say, to say, um, look, here, I want to split the keys. I want to give some insensitive, not, not so security critical signing keys to machines. I will let them sign some bundles for me, for example. But I want developers to sign some other more security critical information using their own offline keys, right? Or keys that they have that, that machines don't have access to. So I need to be able to support this rich model so that we can sneak in in total metadata on top of that, uh, tough, which is already transparently doable in Notary V1, by the way. Um, Rod has written a code to do it. What we don't have the ability right now is that basically right now we're kind of forced to trust the machine design everything, which we don't want it to. So for example, the Intoto root layout metadata, which is basically, you can think of it as, this is, this is the rules for my build pipeline. Okay, developer sign this thing, machine signs this thing, maybe the machine is allowed to package, but the machine is not trusted to produce source code, for example. And so there's this rules, you want it to be immutable which means that you want it to be signed with offline keys. So long story short, we just need a way for Notary V2 to support a richer way to split keys. And that, that's what we mean by delegation. Yeah, which is supported in the top reference implementation and some other top implementation out there. Yep, exactly. Okay. Uh, the second big thing that uh, we- well, Before you go to the second big one, uh -huh. we, we think we need to digest that one. We, we, what what do you what are the what's the actual requirement, technically, as opposed to, hand, at a high level? Sorry, because none of us sure. read the link. What's the use case? Yeah. we only read the document. We didn't read the link document. Got it. Um, technically and very specifically, it would be great for Notary, if it's going to support tough metadata, to 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 support the whole richness of the key. Uh, basically, we we need to be able to support tough 1.0 style delegations. That's it. And I can point you to the part in the specification where it talks about all that. Delegation, okay. So, mm -hmm. Notary V2 should be able to support the tough one point of delegation thing. Yeah. Yeah. Moving the signatures into the registry, this is just metadata on the signature itself. Why does, why, do, we, do, we, do, we, need, do we need to even worry about what is in the signature? Because in total extensibility will be on top of the signature itself. Uh, I'm just trying to understand where does this. Is there a align? requirement on that? Right. Yeah. Is like, there, yeah. Is there something that notary needs to do? Probably? Well, it's yes. almost like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, so in total will do its own thing. From a notary V2, from the previous, like it doesn't care, right? We can sneak in in total metadata in there. That's perfectly fine. We can already do this. What I'm trying to say is that we need a way to split. So right now, if you put all of the Intoto metadata in one place, the problem is there's no way to say, well, machines get to sign some things with different keys and humans get to sign some more security. So for example, there's some Intoto metadata you never want to sign uh, using a machine, right? It just breaks Intoto security. There's no point to using it um, because there's some higher level uh, information. You, you, you basically want it fixed. And that's the part by delegations, what I mean is you're saying, okay, look, if you're looking for some sensitive information, go to these humans who will sign this information with their offline keys. If you're looking for the rest of the security, not so critical stuff, here's the machines, uh, keys for the machines and go ask them about it. You, <coughs> want, you want to split the trust. Okay, so given we have two minutes left before five, I think, right? And I don't know how many of us can stay beyond or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is there something already written up in the notary GitHub that they can go and comment on or put something and say, look, explicitly allow us to do this or explicitly don't block us to do this because we're already using this capability in artifacts? Correct. Probably the best thing would just be open and like, Trishan can, is to open an issue in the notary requirements um, repo. And, you know, he is explicit in the scenario and what you're trying to accomplish and and where where you where you're concerned that we're not supporting it because I can't tell from what Saj you're saying is it something that goes on top of what we're doing or we're signing something that you've already put in it 
Like, I don't know whether it's an outside wrapper or an inside content. Well, he's definitely saying that Notary V1 doesn't let them do something today that they absolutely have to be able to do, which is yes. yeah. signing that bundle, right? I just don't know what that means in terms of a Notary V2 requirement. I think it's so part of what I'm trying to say is, like, we've seen this with Singularity, and they've been David wrote up some stuff there, and I think it was, you know, it was one of the examples I was thinking of, is we assume other people are doing signing on their artifacts already. Right. We're not going to make them change. Like whatever works for them works great. Yeah. When you're working with registries as you're moving content, we can give you another envelope on it that says, "Hey, by the way, this thing is signed. The fact that the thing inside of this signed too, great. We're not like that yeah. can still work." What I can't tell is that that's what we're referring to. Like, no. hey, Notary V2 no. has extra signed something, or there is another. No, I think what he's referring to is when Notary V2 quote unquote replaces V1. Yeah. Let's make sure it lets us do this. The signing split thing, which Notary V1 doesn't let us do, and that would be great. And so, but specifically exactly. what that means for us, A, I haven't internalized the doc as well yeah. as the links, and it's like, you know, but you have, so. Yeah, I think it's a larger topic conversation about like how we delegate keys, um, how keys are assigned, how keys are managed in the PKI. Yeah. Um, and tying it into uh, Notary V2, I don't know if you've debated whether that's something you want to happen well, out of the band of like the whole. Well, I know that the key well, management key management has to start. Yeah, usability of key management is in is in, and therefore key management has to be in. Yes, but there might be a bunch of thing additional things you can do that that are. Not right. prohibited, but we have to have some minimal use case that we deal with the usability issues. Correct. And that's probably the biggest part in my mind about the next steps as well, is just making sure we start tackling that. The usability? The, the, the key, key management, management of yeah, I, that's going to be hairy. Yeah. Just and not to drop, like, forget about the scenario here, which is uh, everybody's talking about multiple, splitting the, the keys themselves, splitting the signature information. Uh, which kind of goes back to Sam's proposal of multiple signatures inside the artifact, and I so think it might be covered. Is it a multiple or is it a split? No, no, no. Oh yeah, no, it's a different thing. Sorry, can I help to clarify and see yeah. if we're on the same page? Yep. So you want two different things. One is you don't want to use. So let's uh, let's just say there's one key to sign everything. Okay. You don't want that one key to sign all of the same information. So what you want to do is that you want to use two different keys. It signs for information A, key one, mm -hmm. and key two signs for information B. Yep. Okay, this is what we mean by delegations. Um, that's the simplest version of it. Um, and then mm -hmm. the other thing you want is that, whoa, hold on, information A is much, much more information, uh, more important than information B. Like a single key cannot be responsible. So we want something we call threshold signatures, where you know you have the two man rule basically, M out of N signatures. Do we agree? Go ahead. I, I think you, I'm not sure if we're at the end of the day and our brains are fried, but I, I think. You know, the, these are these are snapshot keys that kind of keep rotating at much, much higher velocity. That's what okay. you're trying to get to. Notary supports this already. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, let, let me try to simplify that again. And I guess we should get going soon, unfortunately. Is that sometimes you want multiple keys to sign for some type of information, right? Um, and then some other types, uh, some other times, what do you want to say is that I don't want one or even a group of keys to sign for everything. I want to split it between different people and different machines. Essentially, you want to have n number of keys that can be used by n number of users to claim things that they specifically can. And at the end, you're going to look at who signed what to make a decision on whether you want to trust this thing or not based on some threshold, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So That's one part of it. it yep. Yeah, it's essentially kind of like how do you uh, enable these n number of users to get the keys? What key, where do they chain from, uh, and what do they? Uh, what does that actually mean? Like we've talked about a lot from the organization level, like we trust Microsoft, but uh, is every developer in Microsoft like you know how they how do like are we going to go down at the level of that? That's a different use case from looking at yeah. um, things that are done by individual developers, um, and that's where I think like the PKI challenge comes in is that how do we define that 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 uh, PKI and uh, how does that scope 
uh, come into sort of like how individuals would get keys. And PKI in all of this discussion falls squarely on the key management and how Notary B2 has to deal with that, right? right. And yes. when we first kicked off, who, what did we say was the working group for that one? Uh, I mean, and that's I mean that's specifically why oh, we've got AWS oh, Crypto in here that, to assist yeah. with is that, right? Because it sure as heck ain't me. Do <laughs> that. So uh, we'll get to that. I'm not. Well, you know, there's there's new people coming in, and we'll fix correct. The right word. So this discussion that the CNAB and this doc is raising yeah. is in the context of that. Okay. Point taken. Make sure that that's something we have to tackle anyway. I'm just trying to understand how what this actually means. But that's also not something we'll solve right this minute. We can definitely cool. do the requirements repo and <coughs> I think that would be great because then it's it's locked <coughs> and we are and something we'll have to go back to and make sure we don't forget. Um, Can you open an issue and just put some stuff in there, then we can comment and read and ask questions and clarify. Yeah. yeah we'll do. For what it's worth, there's a top uh, spec section that describes exactly what uh, Trishank and I are trying to do. Okay, now make sure to link that. Okay, so next steps then, it's 505. One step you already said, you you need to do some merging of some Justin Kappa's comments and yeah. scenarios. Yeah. Sam said he'll take a quick look at putting some of that stuff which we put notes in there. Um, I have a little thing in my own head that I think we, we need to do. We've got a month before we get to KubeCon EU. Minbar, what do we want to accomplish by then? We have two sessions. What is what's the historic been history's been on when you do these sessions? Is it like people coming to get the aha I see the vision versus That's the first session. The first session yeah. is just explaining what it's about. That's okay. very straightforward. The second session is basically working working session on whatever we, we want to resolve at that point. Okay. When you so say working put, session, is it is this room with five hundred people in it? What is I don't know what you mean by a working Well you're on the docket to talk about it with Justin. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Out. Working session literally means we can sit we can go through the problems that we have outstanding and okay. talk talk about what we need to do to resolve them. So we've got you know, we've so it's it's designed for working session in the sense it's designed for, it, it's more of a conversation. It's pitched for develop for people who are working on the project. Not okay. people of general interest. Okay, so we could leverage that, I, yeah. right? And it's basically some cat herding that'll occur, and we'll talk around and we'll mediate and get these are the top problems we absolutely want input on. Let's get going. Okay. And that's the second session. How long is that? An hour? Two? 14 minutes, I think. But they, they, it can probably run over. Okay. There's, okay. there's not many buffers in between sessions. Okay, so what, I'm working with Amy to get a Monday afternoon. A full blown something like this. Yes. Okay. For people that are there and have a room with a projector, and we're just trying to work through the logistics. So let's start with you, Sam. What would you like to see accomplished within the next month to get to KubeCon EU? Just because that's a <coughs> line in the sand we arbitrarily pick. I know you're not there. Yes. I'm yes. going to go on vacation I'm very gone for a significant portion of time before then. Too. Fair enough. No. Just as a <laughs> contributor to this thing, what would be cool to have done by then? I'd, I'd like us to have agreed on the scope of what we think is for OCI, all of the things about like what are we signing and like okay. what does the signature mean and resolving questions around names and things like that. I'd like us to have a, a clear idea of, of what, our, what our goals and our non-goals are for that, I think. So that's not very ambitious. I doubt it. That sounds pretty ambitious. <laughs> just like... Okay. I'm yeah. I think that, and I'm I'm kind of. I think we should have an idea about how modular we, we're going to be able to make this. I.e., what we're going to be able to offer as a kind of minimum entry point versus how we're going to give people more advanced use cases because um, so so what exactly what exactly is our kind of minimum base user experience that you get and what's the kind of route whereby you add <coughs> more complex pieces. 
Okay. I, just, I think the, there's so many different things that come up in the possibilities that, that you can do here, like Providence and other, all these other conversations come up. I'm, I'm hoping we can define the scope of what Notary is taking on, meaning the signing of content regardless of what the content is, and show opportunity for other projects to leverage that, like whether it be the SBOM or the build to source thing that you know, Vincent was doing is that now there's confidence that I can put stuff in a registry and sign it and trust it. So, but there's a, but we, we, we as this working group have a scope of, we just sign stuff. I think if we can get that and identify what's needed from the OCI spec, optional or not, then we can finally declare the OCI image spec, oh, sorry, distribution spec, a 1.0. Start getting teams like you know, Derek and all the other container D folks to start paying attention because this thing's coming their way, and at some point later this year, we can start having some paying attention. Okay. Anybody else wants to state what they would like to see within the next month? The next month? Yeah, <laughs> you've got to go on you. <laughs> what can we move? I mean, the prototype mm -hmm. container D plugin would be. Uh, be desirable. A mm -hmm. continuity plugin that can validate any signature from a registry just to show the concept without uh, just as a spec. I mean, more mm -hmm. than a spec is what I'm trying to say. So basically, a plugin that takes that implements some sort of a rough code. You want yes. rough code yes. <laughs> even before you document the spec. You're like, yes. whatever. I mean, because do the, the experience plugin has to be driven by that at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, anybody on the bridge, since our next face-to-face -face will probably be at KubeCon EU unless that's canceled because of the virus thing, what do we want to see? Anybody have any min bar they'd like to see? Can we sign that virus and keep it contained? <laughs> <laughs> he did say container D. So. <laughs> anybody, I know John's been on there. He's said a few things, mostly by comments. Anybody else? John, did you drop? I don't know. Yeah, he did. Radu, Trishank, Marina. Uh, no, from from our from my part at least, no. I think there's nothing that there's not a minimum thing that you need implemented in a time frame. So I, if there's cool. anything to help this process, we're more than happy. To. I agree with Radu. Yeah, I do as well. I'd also want to get an understanding of key management requirements. Um, a lot of times making key management pretty easy just adds a lot of vulnerability to it. Um, so you want to think through sort of like uh, what does it actually mean to configure uh, trust, right? Like if right. you're not taking an out-of-band um, action to establish your need of trust, uh, we're kind of going back to almost like a similar to trust on first use model. Okay. I agree. Yeah, and this ties into the user experience for both building and signing and validating. How easy and how diff or difficult is going to be for users to set up all this? Okay. Cool. I think that's definitely an important thing because I feel like we keep talking about it and we're not like starting to swing <clears throat> deep in there. But I don't think we'll do that by meeting on a weekly basis continuously. So we're just going to have to break off and do that, right? So. I can definitely participate to make sure notes are being taken and all of that's there, but somebody else is going to have to drive that. Mm -hmm. And from our last kickoff, from the kickoff, it was Justin, right? You had taken the key management piece as the main owner, was it? Was it Justin? It's all memorable and stuff. Um, it's in the notes. Yeah, it is in the notes. <laughs> and I know from yeah. our side, it would be Mia yeah, slash Aaron that can participate and that that'll give us a right blend. But we'll need somebody from at least another couple of registries to to, to participate as well. Uh, who? So we've got somebody from AWS, and you, Steve, you had suggested that you've got somebody from ACR or from Microsoft. I'm um, meeting with some people tomorrow to just to see if they can participate yeah. in this project. And otherwise, we can definitely at least get started. Yeah. Go. So do you guys? You have. We're all on Slack, right? So maybe you guys can find, figure out a way to meet and chat. Yeah. Sweet. I think. Uh, what do we want to do by next week? I think. Do we want to? 
obviously I want to hold my own self accountable for <coughs> working in some of the scenario <coughs> Um I know everybody's chomping at the bit to try to get some design. And it's like the big thing, so we want to try to you know, certainly going to start getting to the conversation of what uh, Sam put forward. So how many weeks we we between now? When do you actually take off vacation, Sam? I'm I'm out for just a various different reasons in a bunch of March. So I will not be here like starting like the entire month, shall we assume, or uh, I'll so I'm here on Monday. I will be available again Monday of the 16th, Monday the 16th, okay. and Monday the, no, that's it. Okay, so the 9th you're out. I'm out the 9th, and then I'm out, uh, like, after the 16th. Pretty much through KubeCon? Yes. Okay. Do you think you can get the stuff written up for the second? So next week we can... I feel bad that there's a bunch of people I can't make this time zone that have been interested and would like to do some kind I'm, of recap. I'm gonna on. I'm gonna try to do that. <coughs> if I can't, it's not gonna then make it until I'm back here again. Yeah. You would would you make it by the sixteenth then? If you don't make the second? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So I'm gonna is there anything I can do to help? I mean I know you like with some other stuff that you've been kinda of poking at, but No, I, I have I just have my day job. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's deliverable too, so um, <laughs> Too bad. Me is the one I'm still trying to catch up on this freaking artifact uh, IANA, IANA registration code. Okay, interesting. Um, okay. Cool. Who who owns getting this recording out or posted? I don't know how to get this. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll try to find it. I'm going to see. It's going somewhere. Thank you. That'll help. That'll help just um, uh, Vincent, even though I can't see Vincent yeah. listening to a four and a half hour recording. And of who is going to KubeCon? Obviously the three of us. I am. Us. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, so tentatively assume Monday afternoon we'll have a meeting. Monday afternoon of KubeCon, okay. We have uh, AWS Day, Container Day on right. Monday. AWS Container Day is on Monday, yeah. but... You don't have to be there for I, all I'm that. not, I'm yeah. deliberately not going to do any yeah. yammering with okay. customers on those days. Yeah. There are enough Kubernetes people who can do that. You, you should be able to skip that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm 10, 10 yeah. Yeah. Um, The assumption is, unless you're presenting, that there's people there that are covering it, and it, it is the opportunity that we can break up, because if I do it any time during the rest of the week, There'll be some other session that you're going to want to attend. So Monday afternoon, Monday which afternoon. means as long as we are there Monday morning slash Sunday evening, we're good. Yeah, traveling is the, the hassle. Oh, this is a direct, right? That leaves from Seattle to get yeah, there yeah. Monday at 9 a.m. Get there uh, the next day. So yeah. Coming back, it's nice. Going there, it's a hassle. Mm -hmm. Good thing. It's from this way, anyway. Cool. It's a train ride. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So for those on the bridge, the notes are up there. Thanks, uh, Trishank and... Uh, Thanks, Radu well, and Marina for putting stuff in there, and John as well, but it's dropped. So, thank you, thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're down here. Thank you. All right. Bye. Picture. Before.